We made it. <laughs> but it's not over yet, Snake. <laughs> yeah, we we got to the to the end of the game, but we have one more special surprise left for you guys. So, as I I hinted at before in the previous video, this is going to be comprised of two parts uh, running simultaneously. So, first there will be a speed run that I performed a few days ago um, from start to finish uh, of the entire game of the entire main story game using uh, the gun menu. So it's basically the equivalent of a new game plus run. Okay. And while that's running, um, I discovered that there's a surprising amount of fan fiction uh, inspired by gun, uh, especially <laughs> given, uh, especially, you know, given the game's relative obscurity. Um, so uh, I, I guess I should give a content warning first before we start. This will include... Well, the, the original version of the fan fiction included scenes of pretty graphic sexual violence, which we've cut. We're not going to be reading those. Although it does also include scenes of consensual sex, which we will most certainly be reading. <laughs> so we're going to be... The, the, the rape scenes We're going to be fast have, and sexy. Yeah, the, 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 the rape scenes do have some importance to the plot. We're, we're going to be, like, summarizing them, but not reading them verbatim. So, uh... Uh, you know, just just to be a little sensitive to that. Uh, so the the fan fiction in question uh, has the amazing title "What Will Happen Next" uh, <laughs> by such a careless whisper. Now, normally in this situation, I wouldn't be calling out the the name of the person who wrote the fan fiction, um, except that uh, it's it's pretty terrible. But the fan uh, fa the fanfic author actually agrees with us on this. Uh, on their profile on fanfiction.net, they specifically say. P.S. There will be more than a few stories on here that are just god-awful from when I was just beginning to post. So feel free to chuckle or point out any flaws. <laughs> so oh, uh, gonna... we've, we've been granted permission uh, to do just that. Um, anyway, uh, if you want to uh, follow along with the story, we've actu I've actually set this up. I was originally going to do like baked-in subtitles for this like I did for all the other videos, but I thought that some of you may want to actually watch the speedrun uninhibited. So instead, I've actually put those as subtitle files on YouTube. So if you want to actually read along with the fan fiction, just go ahead and press the uh, closed captioning button on the YouTube player, and the fan fiction will appear as subtitles. And if you don't want to, just press that again, and you can watch the speedrun without those uh, without that pesky fan fiction in the way. All right, you ready to get started on this? Perfect. What will happen next, by such a careless whisper? Gun, beware of what you're about to read. Death appears sudden, and depression rushes over fast. What is Cole Port and Soapy crying over? Please read. Gotta be a good, but also sad story. Denton, Clay, Hoodoo, Reed, Hollister, etc. Beginning part sad, after the game. Right behind you, Pa. Chapter 1. Running Thoughts. Author's Note. I finally get to make more gun stories. I'm so happy now. But I think this one will be too mature and have too many sexual scenes in it. But I still think that would work. By the way, I hope gun fans will love my gun stories, three. Cole's point of view. Empire City. I was heading down to a little town called Brimstone. A young English man by the name of Jack Swift sent me a telegraph, and I decided to come down to see who these people are. Uh, but we're not going to be hearing from Jack Swift again. The wind was cold and it beat fiercely against my face. I spurred my horse into a gallop, and soon I was stopped by many wounds. We both looked at each other in great fear and yet great happiness. He rode up closer to me as he handed me a dream catcher. He said it was for catching the bad things that surround you, and it would help me so much. I thanked him for this wonderful gift he has given, and I was off again. What? Period? Question mark? The, the author seems to have this really weird affinity for putting periods before exclamation marks and question marks. I don't know why. So, yeah. What? Period? Question mark? I think I noticed Soapy and Port riding up towards me in the darkness. I knew I heard sounds of horses' hooves, but I didn't know if it was them. When they got close enough to see, it was them for sure. Soapy looked like hell again, and Port just had another broken arm. Again. But I wanted to get down there before sunrise. Hey, cool. Where y'all heading? Period? Question mark. 
Port and Soap both rode up to me, and I hung my head down. I just wish they would stop following me, and I wish they would never worry about me. I let out a long sigh and spurred my horse at a running speed down the train tracks. Port cursed out at me, and soon they both caught up with me. Why you trying to leave us here, Colton? Clay's in trouble, and we need your help. Port's disturbed voice got more fierce with anger and sadness for Clay. I knew Clay is more important than this trip I was about to make, but I sure still need to head down to that little town. I nodded my head and started in a running motion again, this time me following Port and Soap. Author's note, I think this one was kind of bad, but I still hope you guys love it, RXR. I think that's, what is that, review and rates? <laughs> oh no, it's I think review... So. I, I, it's uh, it's some sort of uh, fanfiction.net slang. All right. So the way this yeah. is going to work, we're going to be alternating chapters. So that was chapter one. And I'm going to hand it over to Roy for the next chapter. Chapter two. Goodbye, Clay. Down in the hit out. <laughs> I had just got back to Clay's hideout when I saw him bleeding half to death on the ground, right beside his henchman and port Soapy and I standing right beside him as well. We don't know how he got in this bad condition, but we are all going to find out, even if I would ever have to do it alone. Come on, Clay. Get your lazy ass up from the ground. We got you. I accidentally cursed towards Clay as Port Soap and I tried so hard to help him up, and we laid him down and... Light, light him down? Light him down. L-Y-E-D. We could all hear his whispers and cries, but we have to wait until the doctor arrives. He took about three hours to get here when Clay was unconscious from too much blood loss. Doc, help him, please. We can't let him die like this. You gotta do something. Port choked and grabbed the doctor by his white apron and pulled him close with his one arm. I grabbed him away from him and told him to calm down. We all knew it would be hard to live life without Clay. He was the only one we knew know who actually tried to give us our freedom in the world. And we may be Indian lovers, but at least we have a heart. <laughs> Okay, are they just completely forgetting about Chavez? <laughs> As the doctor was checking his heartbeat with a stethoscope, I took the boys back out from the tent. We sat near the empty fire pit on logs, sipping from our last night beer bottles. Today didn't seem like I thought it would be like. I could already feel Clay slipping from us, and it gave me terrible aches and deep, saddened pains. But Clay was a strong, brave man. At least if he dies, he'll die a brave and courageous man. And we'll never ever forget what he has done for us. To give us this freedom of whomever to love. This freedom to say, hey, if you don't like us, just leave us alone. Because we have something you don't have, and that's Clay. <laughs> just before the doctor left the tent, I ran inside. But I was too late. We were all too late. Clay, Clay is gone. Oh no. I walked... <laughs> I walked towards his body and grasped his hand tightly with mine. C Cole, you're a very brave man. Don't ever let that slip away from you. And don't let anyone pick up, pick on you boys. Oh. <laughs> there, there's enough wrong with this fanfic already. Don't add anything to it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anything to happen to you. I love you guys. Those last words of him sunk into my heart deeply, hurting me badly. No, no, no! I shouted to the sky as I held his hand tight and cried so hard I don't think I would be able to stop myself. What, Cole? Port shouted at me as him and Soapy appeared in the tent beside me. I wiped my eyes he whipped them. and looked down at... <laughs> whipped! <laughs> looked down at... It's hard not to correct this! <laughs> I whipped my eyes and looked down at Clay's face. The face of freedom. The face of bravery, but also the face of love and care. We all wished he was here right now, but he will always be in our hearts. He was always in our hearts. Clay, I can't believe you're gone. I, I, Port began to stutter as he leaned in towards Clay's empty body and cried silently so we couldn't hear a teardrop or a nose sniffle. As I kept my eyes on him, I heard Soapy say a few words. He held his hat to his chest and closed his eyes. Oh, Lord, please let this brave man of ours soar anywhere he pleases. Please just let him be free. He finished his last words with a few sniffles and a hug from me to him. I felt soap cry on my shoulders. I knew this is hard for all of us. 
but it just wasn't fair for him to go that fast after all he's done for us. There's no point in living if you have nothing to live for anymore. We had nothing now. All we had was Clay. The man who always shouted at us, but shouts at us to make us understand and follow his footsteps. But still, we had friends to be there for you when you needed it most. And the most time was now. Is now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like how we, even with all of the... Uh... Uh, the, the the weird grammatical choices and spelling errors, and yet the uh, the author still managed to spell stethoscope correctly. <laughs> spell the ten dollar words correctly. Fail the five dollar words. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll, all right, all right. You can take the author's note, and then we'll switch. Oh my god! I began to cry when I got the part where Clay dies. I can't believe I made something that sad, but also so beautiful. <laughs> we'll never forget you, Clay, even though you didn't die in gun. But this was after the game, but the bad guys aren't dead except for Magruder. He only appears in flashbacks. So for those of you who aren't familiar with fan fiction, this is something that happens a lot. That the uh, the authors will just take random parts of the canon and change them and then not accommodate for other parts. Uh, <laughs> th this happens a lot. This is not unique I, to this one. More than you would hope. Yeah. All right, here we go. Chapter three. Depression rushes in fast. Dodge City. Today was Clay's funeral. We all went into the old church and held one there. There were as much people I thought there would be, and they were all teary-eyed as they all walked up to see Clay in an open casket. It was a very depressing day for all of us, but mostly Soapport and I, and also his henchmen. I couldn't go up to see him, but I had to. I wanted to. I took one look at him, and I felt my eyes tear up so sudden. After the funeral, and after the preacher was done preaching, presumably this is not Reed, is the preacher, uh, <laughs> the boys and I walked out of the church after all the other folks got out first. Oh shoot, I just can't believe he's actually gone, Port sighed, trying so hard to keep his tears from coming while rubbing his broken arm, realized that the cloth holding his arm and a big piece of wood together was tearing a little. Port's face looked so angry, full of fury. It was all that fucking Doc's fault. He must have done something wrong. Port began to go wacko as I tried to hold him still, but all he did was push me down. Port, it wasn't the doctor's fault. Just calm your ass down, I said, getting myself back up as Soapy was backing up slowly just to get away from us. Port was very messed up. He wasn't like himself after Clay died. You don't say... Uh, I, I jumped on his back and tackled him down on the ground, making him taste dirt. Stop, period, exclamation mark, I shouted at him as I got up and attempted to grab his arm. But he kicked me hard and I fell to my knees, but I got back up no matter how bad the pain was. He threw a punch at me and hit me in the face, but it wasn't strong enough to knock me over. So I crouched down quickly and attacked his legs, watching as he tumbled over. He spit at me once. I had him pinned down, and he rolled himself over on top of me. Wait, is this, are we sure this is a fight scene? <laughs> <laughs> it might be Brokeback Mountain. I could smell the dirt stirring up from underneath us, and I took some golden brown dirt and threw it in his eyes. Uh, also, I'd like to point out that I actually managed to lap Honest Tom during this race. <laughs> Come on, Soapy, get his legs and I'll get his arms. Soapy listened and did what he was told. We finally realized that Port was asleep or unconscious. Or, sorry, unconscious. When we got back to the hide, period, uh, hide space out, the henchmen of Clay's crowded us, the, the henchmen of Clay's crowded us and helped us carry Port's big body into one of the tents. Um. Oh, oh, right, because of the fight. I, I sorry. I was got confused. What happened? Period. Ex period. Question mark. One of them spoke, looking down at him. But I didn't answer. I didn't want them all to know that we got into a fight just because of what happened to Clay. So instead, I walked out of the tent in anger, and Soapy followed close behind. God damn! What happened to Port now? Period. Question mark. I threw my hat on the dirt ground and looked at Soapy, who was looking back at the tent. He put a hand on my shoulder and spoke. Wheel, kid? I don't know exactly what's wrong with him, but he ain't well. His words ain't and well rang in my ears. I couldn't believe Port has become this way. 
I know it was a terrible loss that we just had. But why does he have to be this way? <laughs> Uh, then this is part two of the same chapter, uh, even though part one never got a name. Uh, part two, never think about tomorrow. It was already nighttime, past eight I would say, and everyone was having a good time, just like the last time we did. Chaves! Not, not Chavez, this is Chaves. One of Clay's Mexican henchmen was playing the fiddle, while the other henchmen were busy talking... Busy talking, busy playing poker on the ground, or just busy having a good time. You know, they, they were busy, apparently. But Port was inside the tent still, talking to uh, talking the the sky. Soap, I'll be back. I got my seat up off the log next to Soap and headed towards the tent with a half-empty beer bottle in my hand. I made my way inside the tent and saw Port on the ground covered in a blanket. Here, drink some of this. I handed him my bottle, and he drank from it fast and then handed it back to me. I crouched down beside him, and he looked my way. Hey, kid, I'm sorry for what happened back there. I don't know what happened to me. I saw a sparkle in his eye, and I told him to come out of this tent and have some fun. But he didn't want to. For the first time, he didn't want to have a couple of drinks and talk about the good old days. I had to stay inside with him just because we both were feeling the same way, but I just didn't show it. And besides, he was my buddy, and a good friend he is. And a good friend he is, hmm. Sorry. Uh, author's note. Hope this chapter was a good one too. RXR please XX. <laughs> I sincerely hope Audacity was just recording because my machine just hitched for some reason. Um... Uh, is it recording? Are you, uh... It is. It is recording. It is now. I'm gonna have to check and make sure that I don't have a uh, uh, blank spot. But it came back for the end of the chapter. All right. Uh, okay. Chapter four. Port is back and okay. Yay. Today. <laughs> Yay. Today, Port was feeling better than he was last night. The doctor gave us some pills to give him when he acts that way again. But I don't think he's crazy. He's just having a rough time, just like the rest of us. And I never thought the painful feeling would ever go away. Hey, Port, drink this. Soapy handed him a tin cup full of warm water. He took it from him and gulped it down quickly, not knowing that I put a few pills in the cup. Soapy sat down beside him on the log and dusted his own jacket off. <laughs> Why? Excuse me? Oh, oh, sorry. He I... slipped him the Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, kid, we have to give him some rest. Soapy looked at me, then back at Port, who told him he didn't want to rest. He stood up and stretched, yawning like he was perfect. Hey, you two, I feel fine. He smiled, trying so hard not to hurt his broken arm anymore. Chavez came back with some food in his saddlebag. Here, guys, eat up. I got some eggs and toast from a friend of mine. He jumped off his horse and took his bag off the saddle and sat it down in front of us. I already put them to a fire and it's all warm for you. Please eat up. He was crouched down beside the empty fire pit and laid the food on a tin plate he had and let us pick what we wanted. Port looked happy and he took one slice of toast with a piece of egg in his hands. I, I, After hope, all that, the I food, hope that egg was cooled off by this point. <laughs> Either that or it was a raw egg that he was holding in his hands. <laughs> Hot egg right in the mouth. After all the food Chavez brought us was gone, he rode off and Port climbed up on his horse and told Soapy and I to come along with him as he goes to dodge. Come on, Soap, get on your horses, boys, let's ride. He shouted cheerfully as we followed behind him in a running act motion all the way towards Dodge City. As we entered Dodge, we rode our horses in in a walking speed and headed to Hoodoo's Palace. Well, hello there, Soapy tipped his hat to a little young lady as we rode past a few people, and her response was a giggle. Soap, enough flirting. I just kept to myself as Port chuckled at Soapy. Well, you know, she was very pretty, if I may say myself. There Soapy goes again. I rode further ahead of them, and they caught up with me in no time. Well, <laughs> here we are, boys. Now let's get a nice bed to sleep in and a fine woman to lay with, chuckled Port as his dirty little mind caught up with him again, and <laughs> finally he was back to his usual self. Soap and Port head inside while I wandered around outside for a bit. I glanced around my surroundings and inhaled the deep aroma of the dirt ground beneath my feet. I just love these small towns. They calmed me and made me feel okay. 
made me feel like I was home. All right, I got to preface chapter five by saying that this is one of my favorite chapters in the story. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> chapter five. Not the right one for soap. Today I found out where Soapy has gotten all his fresh wounds from. He was gone last night when I made my way back. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is a deliberate death, by the way. Checkpoint. Reload. Less enemies. Sorry. Uh, today I found out where Soapy has gotten all his fresh wounds from. He was gone last night when I made my way back to the hideout, and Port and I couldn't find him. I wish I could have been there for him. I have never, ever been there for him. Uh, except for all the times you, you rescued him. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, that one time you went out of your way, uh, you went all the way back to Dodge to, to rescue him from uh, 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 from those uh, card sharks that were... Uh, <laughs> and, and never mind. Uh, I have never, ever been there for him, except for all the times I was. And that was hurt me. And that was hurt me deeply inside. <laughs> Kid, I I'm sorry. I tried all I could to stop him, but I couldn't. I'm sorry. I looked down in shame and showed Port and I his wounds and bruises on his face. Get the bandages and alcohol, quick, I ordered Port. And he was off to get the supplies as fast as he could. Hey, Soapy, it's not your fault. You did all you could, you did all you could do. And it's okay. It is my fault for not being there for a friend, I spoke. I should be the one with the cuts and bruises. I stopped there and Port came back with the right supplies I needed. As I opened the bottle of alcohol, I dabbed the little cloth on the tip of the bottle and pressed it against his wounds and bruises. Either that or he's making a Molotov, not sure. Oh shoot, kid, that stings. He winned a bit and then it all faded away once I was finished wrapping the bandages around where he needed them to be. <laughs> This is very difficult to, to read with the mistakes intact, but I'm going to try to do this for the entire fan fiction. Um, <laughs> well, Soap and Cole, I'm off on a date with my lovely and pretty girlfriend down in Empire. I'll be back first then tomorrow morning, I promise. He waved goodbye as our hands waved the same back at him. Okay. <laughs> Grammatically correct, but very awkward. Okay. <laughs> Once he was out of sight, I provided Soapy with some fresh water, and he drank it all up. and But he was still looking down. I didn't know what to do. Hey Jennings, what's wrong? I asked, looking at him as he grabbed a half-empty beer bottle from the other night's party and drank from it. Making his cut-up lips moist with the spill of... Whiskey. Beer bo empty beer bottle. Whiskey. I'm, I'm clicking at the... Uh, at the sublime text file I'm using right now. Pointing out... Within the span of two sentences, the blatant continuity error. I'm sorry, this is just my my inner editor yelling at this. Uh, huh, kid, you won't understand me. No one ever does. He stood up and scratched his arm, lying the bottle back down. I just need some extra company. Not from you, kid, but from a woman. Uh-oh, this is an ultimate betrayal. Sorry. Not from you, kid, but from a woman, he said, as he sat back down. I thought about something for a moment. Then an idea came to mind. Hey, Soap, since you want a nice woman, why don't you head on down to the Alhambra or Empire Saloon? I suggested as he looked at me. My god, there are whores in whorehouses! <laughs> or at least or at least portraits of them uh, uh, <laughs> behind the bar. <laughs> it's all a long con. They don't, they don't have any whores at all. You just get to look at portraits of them. <laughs> yeah. All right. I should go down there. I began to feel better as he stood up and dropped his bottle of whiskey. Well, come on, kid. We ain't got all day. He was already on his horse while I jumped on mine, and we galloped all the way down to Empire. When we got to Empire, we strolled on down to Hoodoo's Palace and searched that side for a nice woman. I think they meant to say sight. Uh, we both noticed Port and his date. She didn't look like the type for him, but they were still cute together. Hey guys, what you doing down there, period, question mark. He smiled at us as he had his good arm around her waist. I looked away from her and back at port. Here for a lady to hang out with, because y'all can take her sister. It's okay with her. <laughs> he winked at his date and she smiled back. Fine, but we need to see her. I spoke again as port, uh, in, as port pointed inside Hoodoo's palace. <laughs> oh, so wait, is port state a prostitute as well? Uh, okay. She's, God, in, she's in there. Hope you like her. Poor it's pretty girl spoke as she giggled and Soapy and I walked inside. As we searched around the hotel, 
we both spotted a woman that looked sweet enough to be her sister. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello there. Soapy tipped his hat to the lovely lady and she giggled. She had long flowing blonde hair and the greenest eyes of all greens. Uh, her laugh was the cutest thing though and she wore a long light blue dress with white matching gloves and a cute little hat on top. What's your name, beautiful? Period question mark. Soap spoke flirtious, flirtious again as she whispered in his ear and I watched and then walked back out of the building leaving them two alone. My name's Christina, she spoke while leaving his ear slowly right as she blew gently on the side of his ear. <laughs> Uh, okay, interesting foreplay. Uh, he really liked her, and she knew he did too. Y'all wanna go upstairs, Mr. Jennings? Her voice attracted him to her as he followed her, and she shut the door behind him. While they were inside, she fearfully pulled Soap into a lip lock and held him tight. He kissed her back and backed her up into the door, thumping as her back hit it. Oh, you're just beautiful. He smiled and removed his hat and threw it on the bed, continuing what she started. His fingers slowly traced down the length of her long hair while her hands were a hold of his back. Oh, Mr. Jennings! She rested her head back on the door as his laps met her neck and began, and began to kiss and nibble gently, making her squeal with two E's. Take me, period exclamation mark. She suddenly jumped up around Soapy and knocked him down on the bed while she was still above him with her legs locked around his waist. Oh my. Oh my. But he refused. He got her off him and he took his hat walking out the door. She just wasn't the right one. Aw. Okay, I'm actually going to take this next... I, I'm just going to take this next chapter because it's very short. Okay. Uh, and then you can take chapter seven. All right, so chapter six is called characters in my story uh oh my this is the God. dramatis pers this is the dramatis persona of this fic and it's in chapter six all right roll credits these are the characters in my story number one colton cole white number two many wounds number three clay allison already dead but okay fine introduce him now mm -hmm. uh number four soapy jennings Number five, Port Something. <laughs> Which I don't think something yeah, it, was his it, last name. Well, yeah, he, he never. He was actually never given a, 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 a proper, proper last name. name. Port Smith. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Port Smith. Okay, <laughs> let's just call him Port Smith. All right. Number six is Patrick Denton. Number seven. Here's the really interesting one: Annie Stokes from Red Dead Revolver. This is a crossover. Ooh. Now, for, for those of you who have never played Red Dead Revolver, uh, she's kind of like the outlaw version of um, Bonnie McFarlane from Red Dead Redemption. She basically has a lot of the same characteristics, but uh, instead of being a ranch hand for her father, um, she's basically tried to hold a ranch of her own and has resorted to illegal activities to uh, uh, to, to deal with, with, with the problems of owning a ranch. All right. Um, all right, number eight is Josiah Reed. Josiah, or excuse me, Josiah Reverend Reed. Number nine is Mayor Hoodoo Brown, brought back from the dead. Uh, number ten, Hollister and his men, also brought back from the dead. Uh, number eleven is Rudabaugh, spelled R-U-G-H-D-A-B-A-R. That's Rug Daber. <laughs> number twelve is And Those Indian People. Lovely. <laughs> Bravo. They have names, you know. Bravo, such a careless whisper. That that is that that is some top quality <laughs> writing right there. And number thirteen, and just random people from Empire and Dodge. Just random people. Oh, superb. Yeah. All oh, right, Lord. yeah, you can take uh, chapter seven and eight uh, uh, because uh, because this is where we have to start censoring stuff. Uh, so <laughs> I have to take out large sections of chapter seven and chapter eight, so you can have them both. All right. Chapter 7, Hollister's New Fort. Author's note. 
Well, in this whole story, it is in between the end of the game and the beginning, but Hollister's hideout is in the, some other place now, and Reed, Mayor Hoodoo, and Rudabar, Rugdabar, are alive in this story, but I don't want them to harm the Indians no more, even though they're still Indian haters. By the way, in some chapters, there will be different POVs. <clears throat> Oh, boy. Nice to know the uh, the villains are politically correct now in 1880. Just because you put a period in there doesn't mean it's not a run-on sentence. By the way, yeah, just they're they're monsters, but they're not racists. <laughs> Sir, someone's here to see you. One of Hollister's men announced to him as he followed him and was surprised at what awaited him this long. It was Reed, but he had a beautiful young lady in his arms. She began to skirm. Skirt, What's skirming? <laughs> I hate it when they skirm. When Reed gave her up to Hollister. Censored for rape. Yeah, so this the yeah, this part we had to censor the rest of this chapter, but we're we're gonna summarize it for you. Summary. Annie Stokes is introduced. In this canon, she's a prostitute, of course, who's been badly beaten and nearly raped. She's given to Hollister by Reed as a prize and wakes up next morning with no memory of what happened the night before. We are meant to assume she was raped while sleeping. Hollister tries to assault her again in the morning. She breaks free momentarily, but runs into Reed as she escapes. Admittedly, it's kind of hard to be offended by this scene when it has dialogue like, You poor unluck soul, and here, have a squaw. Oh, sorry, you can't. Ha ha ha. <laughs> All right. And that was legitimately in there. <laughs> yes, that, that was actually in the fic, for, for those of you who want to read it. Um and are not uh, triggered by, by rape scenes. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, we're... The, the dialogue is is actually legitimately funny, despite the horrifying content. J just assume this is a two and a half hour long trigger warning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> chapter 8, The New Woman. Josiah Reed's POV. Yep, this is the first chapter without... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, uh, just going back to the speedrun for a second... Uh, I realize that if you if you blow up the the TNT, uh, uh, like when it, what's right next to the coach, it actually brings the HP down to one, which is even on, even on easy, which is pretty annoying. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Calm down, little girl. The Lord has blessed you with so many great things. I shouted to the sky of the old church, raising a bottle of holy water. I lowered it down, and I returned my focus back to the young beauty, and I noticed she was skirming and screaming beneath. <laughs> The skirming again, the rag that was stuffed in her mouth, tied around with a rope. Oh Lord, please take this soul and make it new. I spoke once more as I removed the rag from her mouth and raised her head with my hand. Drink this, Annie, and you will become new again. I knew right then she didn't obey me, so I had to do more than that. Censored for rape! <laughs> Reed yeah. tries to assault Annie. Big fucking shock, I know. <laughs> But I, I had to include this next part because it's amazing. Uh, it does not actually have any rape or assault in it, but you will love this part. Don't worry. But right then I knew something was wrong. You bastard! Period exclamation mark. She grabbed the bottle of holy water and splashed in my face, which left a burning sensation attached to my face <laughs> and led me away from the girl. <laughs> I could hear her. This is this is this is now in the Castlevania universe, apparently. Where burning, where holy water does burning damage. <laughs> I could hear her leave, but she won't get that far from me. You meddling kid. Next time, gadget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, uh, also, uh, what if I, what if I told you that the the burning of holy water is actually foreshadowing to a twist that appears in one chapter and then never appears again? Oh no. It, that's oh, not going to no. be for much, much later in the fic, but it, it actually, I just, I just realized that was supposed to be foreshadowing because I have actually read this fan fiction twice over before, before we recorded, but I, it only <laughs> just occurred to me that this is supposed to be like some sort of foreshadowing. Anyway, go ahead. Re yeah. Read the, cause the sub chapters are <laughs> split into two parts. Part two, Soapy's new crush. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, you take part two. And then I'll take part three and then the next chapter just to, to just so that okay. uh, you don't end up reading too much here. <laughs> Cole's POV. Hey, kid, where are we headed? Period question mark. Soapy asked me in curiosity while we rode slowly on horseback, watching the sunset turn from yellow to dark orange. 
Such beautiful colors, I thought, but right before we continued on, a young woman came running out of the tunnel towards us, and she was crying. Soap and I quickly jumped off our horses and ran towards her. She fell straight into my arms just before she hit the ground, and it looks like she had a rough time where she, wherever she was by the looks of her. Huh! I put her on my horse and climbed back on her as... On as her shaky arms wrapped around my waist. Come on, Soap! We spurred our horses into a fast gallop, and down the train tracks we followed. When we got back to the hideout, I helped her down, and she looked a lot, little better, but she was still in shock. Hey, ma'am, look at me. I raised her head up, but she refused. I removed my hat and laid it down beside me as I crouched down. Lied, in front lied of her. it down. Lied it down. Lied. <laughs> oh, my God. It's all, every instance of laid is lied, L-Y-E-D, for those it's, of you who don't have the subtitles it's, on. It's, it's it, no spell check. Yeah, I, I'm going to be... Uh, I'm not going to be uh, spell checking any of this in the subtitles. It's all going to be as as, as, uh, as, as it, it appears. appears in the fic. Yeah. Soap was crouched down on the other side of her as well, but he looked like he was more in love with her than anything else. So uh -oh. don't be staring at her that way. I startled her a little as she scooted closer to me than she did to Soapy. Don't let them get me. Don't, she screamed as I held her close, trying to think what was wrong. Soapy scooted closer and reached his hand out to touch her arm, but right when he touched her, she began to st cry. No, dark clothing, dark church, Josiah, period, exclamation mark. She said out loud as her tears fell from her face, and I thought about it long and hard. Then I had something. Soap, I think she's talking about Reed, that evil son of a bitch. I cursed looking at Soap and back at her. Well, kid, I don't know what's wrong with her, but she's just the prettiest thing I've ever laid eyes on. Lied, lied eyes on. I don't know anymore. <laughs> they actually, uh, they, uh, they, oh yeah, she still, uh, the, the, the author still spelled it wrong, but at least included an A this time. <laughs> she, she come, he commented on her beauty, removing his hat and laying it beside him. Hey, come this on, man. Not lying, you ain't... <laughs> lying it beside him. <laughs> hey, come on now. You ain't gonna cry like this. His fingers went through her golden brown hair as she began to stop. We both looked at each other and down at her. We gotta get her some rest. I stood up and left, left my hat behind as Soapy did the same. We climbed up, climbed up on our horses again. This time Soapy waited for me, wanted to ride her down to Dodge. Let's go, Soap. I led the way as he followed close behind. Once we entered Dodge, it was dark except for a few candle lights and lanterns up in the saloon. Then we rode down until we got to Hoodoo's Palace. The old place was giving me a headache. Let's get her a room, I suggested, and I went up to the counter and asked for a room, and he gave me a key, and we headed upstairs. Lie her down and shut the door. I watched as Soapy listened, and then back on her, my eyes went. I brushed her hair out of her eyes so I could finally see her gorgeous beauty in full view. She was the most fine woman I've ever seen. I have to go with Soapy's... It's a love triangle. Oh, boy. I have to go with Soapy's opinion on her looks this time. We then decided on who should watch her, and it was both of us who wanted to. We both can't watch her, so I let Soapy, since he was always getting in trouble elsewhere. Oh, this is a terrible idea. Yep. <laughs> Take care of this one, Soap. She's different. She's definitely a keeper. Before I walked out of the room... I leaned in towards her and kissed her forehead gently and headed out. You creep. I shut the door behind Cole and looked down at her as I sat in a little chair behind the bed where she lay silently, but the sounds of her breathing. Oh, criminy Jim Jam, she is a keeper. <laughs> what the hell? Crimani Jim Jams. <laughs> Crimani Jim Jam. I gave well, I, I, know, I know what to name my grunge band now. <laughs> Yes! I gave a little smile and sat down on the bed beside her. While she was stirring, she opened her eyes and yawned, one of those contagious yawns, and she sat, stared up at me with her hands lying gently beside her face. I smiled at her and slowly stroked her cheek. Where where am I, period, question mark, she asked and got out of bed. But I quickly grabbed her gently before she got out. Don't worry, you're safe with me. She sat back down and smiled at me. As she sat, I couldn't help but notice the holes in her jeans, and I just had to look at her beautiful, creamy skin. 
But doing that and thinking so badly about her made me throb painfully between my thighs. Oh my god. <laughs> so before anything else started to happen, I grabbed a pillow and rested on my lap as quickly as I could without her knowing. Um, what's up with the pillow, period, question mark. Well, you failed, so... She asked, pointing at it as I blushed fiercely and looked back at her. Well, uh... I scratched the back of my head and tried to resist looking at her very wonderfully sized breasts. But it was so hard. She'd actually just cooked some uh, really good chicken breasts. <laughs> and he was hungry, so, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. This isn't creepy at all. No. You're right about picking this lock. This is the same guy who had uh, who had spent several days trapped in a woman's bathroom and had several chances to escape, but instead decided to spend the whole time jacking off to, to women's scooches that he saw. So and th- that is actually canon from his backstory. That's how he got his nickname, remember? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, oh, anyway. God. You had already forgotten that? Yes. No, I, I remember that. I just wasn't going to bring it up in this context. Thank you. And it, it only gets worse, given how the, the how the author portrays Sophie later on. All right, go ahead. I scooted closer and removed the pillow. She accidentally bumped her hand into mine as we both blushed. But I needed her. She felt like the one I needed, the one I really wanted. So without hesitation, my body pushed her back on the bed with her eyes looking into mine. I took her hand in mine and raised it to my lips and planted a gentle kiss on top. Uh-oh. I saw a smile reappear on her face, and I slowly kissed her, resting my hands on both sides of her head on the sheet. Oh. Squeezing the sheets underneath my fist as I felt more pain and couldn't help it from coming. But it looked like she didn't care as much as I thought she would. Was it the only thing that was coming? No! <laughs> no! What am I doing? She spoke gently as I got off her in no time and sat at the foot of the bed. <laughs> what? Excuse me? <laughs> I don't. Once I got off her in no time and sat at the, I I don't. The best smut a thirteen-year-old could write. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but I wasn't gonna tell her what she's been doing. I didn't want her to hate me. I like her, and she's very beautiful and greater than any other woman that I decided in, that I dated in the past. Syntax. Excuse me. This implies that you're already dating her. Yep. <laughs> Uh, do, do you want to keep going with, with part three? or, or uh, you If you want part three, go ahead. All right. Okay. Let me just take some water here. Yeah. Yeah, this is, like I said, this this level is uh, optional stealth, so thankfully for that speed. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Yeah, if we go longer than, if we go longer than uh, the actual run itself, I'll just loop the video. Okay. Part three. Cole's POV. When I headed back upstairs into her bedroom, I found soap in a chair, and the woman in the bed still, but she looked at me and began to leave. Hey, where are you going, period, question mark. I put out my arm in the doorway, and she got trapped inside. (laughs) You're all terrible people. She looked furious at me, and she tried to run away, but I quickly put my hands on both sides of her waist and pulled her into the bedroom and shut the door, blocking it as I locked it as well. (laughs) At this point, you should take Soapy. Oh boy, he's only this out. Is... He's only he's only manipulative and creepy. This isn't you... this isn't rape, but this is rapey. No, this is this is a this is abusive as opposed to rapey. A little bit, yeah. You need to stay here with us. Reed will catch up with you sometime around, and we don't want you to get napped by him. You've already rested. <laughs> you've already slept enough. We don't need you napping anymore. No more nap. I, I, I threw Soapy the key, and he deliberately caught it in his hands and ja- jammed it into his jacket pocket. She forced herself out of my grasp and crossed her arms across her chest. I just want to leave. I need to get back home. I'm in the wrong game. Her voice seemed to get... That's a bad getting, scene. <laughs> Please, take me back to Rockstar San Diego. Her, her, voice se- her voice seemed to be getting angry with me as I stared at her in amazement. Wait, wait, wait. So you live on a ranch, do you? Period, question mark. I asked as she started to listen. Her response was a nod of her head, and she turned her back to me. So I reopened the door, and... Oh, there's a quote, another quote mark here. So I reopened the door and grabbed a big rifle from the doorway and shut the door. 
Is this your rifle? Period question mark. I spoke as she slowly turned back around and looked at it in awe. You found it for me? Period question mark. She gasped and took it carefully from my hands. Well, thank you, stranger. She smiled at me and sat back down, drawing a cloth from her back pant pocket and began cleaning it. I walked towards her slowly and she looked up at me. Hey, why not a sweet thing like yourself try it out for me? What do you say? Period question mark. I suggested while she got up from the edge of the bed and I thought and thought for a moment. Oh, fine, stranger, but I skipped her response and shushed her. My name's Cole. Colton White. No need to call me stranger. I smiled gently as I arched my head back in a motion for Soap to come along. He got out of the chair and stayed close behind. We he wanted to get a good look from behind this woman, but she noticed but she noticed him watching her backside. You pervert! She screamed out loud, drawing attention from random folks that were inside the hotel. Soapy jumped a little and blushed red. Soapy, let me talk to you. I spoke, walking towards him and pulled him by his backside out of uh, by his backside of his jacket. What the hell was that all about? What what are you trying to do to the nice lady? Period question mark. You're one to talk, Cole. <laughs> I, I I hissed with my arms again I hissed with my arms against my chest. He coughed quietly and dusted himself off in a mannerly way, pretending that nothing was wrong. Well, kid, uh, never mind. He scratched the back of his head cautiously, looking at his feet as I pulled him along with us, but the woman was gone. Oh, hell, period, exclamation mark. I cursed, letting go of Soapy as I looked around the hotel, but saw her nowhere. But once I looked out the doorway, about uh, the door space way, she was sitting on the front steps waiting for us, it looked like. Gosh, Soapy, don't get too worked up. She's outside. I sarcastically spoke to him, but really, I was talking about myself. <laughs> wow, that's about as blatant self-projection as you get in these kinds of stories. Yep. I rested my hand on her right shoulder, and she looked up from her rifle at me. Yes, period, question mark. She questioned, raising a dark eyebrow. Let's go down to a nice, quiet place to shoot. She walked down the three steps and headed towards my horse. Fine, but I'm stealing your horse, Str I mean, Colton. Finally, a gameplay mechanic comes into this. <laughs> she smiled at me as I was lost in the moment with her. Uh, kid. Soapy knocked me out of it and I got back to reality. So I jumped on my horse that she was riding as we were off. Soapy got on too late and he was a little far behind, but soon caught up with us. I kept my eyes on the dirt road in front of me and I tried to start up a conversation with her. So, how long have you been shooting that lovely rifle of yours, period, question mark, I asked, feeling her hands trail slowly around my waist. I swallowed the lump in my throat and waited for her to reply, but just one thing I really wanted to ask her was if she had anyone with her. When we entered the Badlands, hey, they're even using uh, settings from the other settings from the game, we pulled our horses into a slow walking pace. Uh, probably couldn't do that, because, assuming that uh, Cole has all the horse upgrades in, in this <laughs> fan fiction. Um, and I could still feel her hands around my waist, messing with my belt buckle. Okay, uh, she's acting like a very typical rape victim, I see. I hope you could uh, notice the dripping sarcasm in my voice there. Um, she's getting well, weird. Yeah, this is not very typical uh, 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 assault trauma. While we're here, I stopped my horse completely and jumped down, and then did the horse glitch, and took her by the hand <laughs> as she jumped onto her feet off the horse. Okay, so I gotta point out there are no commas in this next sentence. Wonderful! Nice place to shoot boys! What? There's, there's no, there should be a comma in between <laughs> shoot and boys. Uh, th this kid's- th th use, use commas responsibly, children, please. She smiled, scanning her surroundings, but she paused for a moment and turned to look at me and Soap. We can't let these wild bofilo get scared or frightened by my shots, so let's head over down that hill. Her long legs headed towards down the hill, while Soap and I kept an eye on her backside. <laughs> They're not even... Like, Cole's not even pretending to be the voice of reason anymore at this point. No! But but I thought it was too horny-ish to do that. Horny-ish? Yep, that's, you know, that's the sexiest of all words. 
hornyish. Mm. When you're 13. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we both stopped and ran toward our new spot. What? Y'all want me to shoot? Period question mark. She unstrapped her brown leather hat from her back and put it on her head, holding her rifle up against her shoulder as the bullet hole was facing behind her. Um, I assume that the that, that the... I I think that's like a character detail on her model in Red Dead Revolver. I'll actually have to check that. Sorry. I spoke softly and then paused. Um, just fire anywhere you like. I replied back to her question as I had nothing else to say except for something stupid that slipped out. <laughs> hey, I walked up towards her away from Soap, so she turned around to face me and I looked into her beautiful blue eyes. You're such a fine woman and all, but I was wondering if you wanted to, well, I paw, and then there's no uh, quote here. I paused, suddenly catching my eyes on a wolf that was heading straight toward us. Oh no, Grey Wolf is coming back. <laughs> This is the most oh, unexpected God. cameo in the fic. All I heard was a loud shot, and I realized her gun tip was smoking. Wait, no, it couldn't have been Grey Wolf, because she actually shot him, and it worked. Yeah, Grey Wolf wasn't in Chapter 8. <laughs> no. And, and it couldn't have worked, because uh, she didn't use a bow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She smiled and winked at me. Let's go, boys. I need a drink or two. I followed behind her, but decided to keep an eye on her ass for as long as I wanted to. <laughs> Cole White, voice of reason. Definite, this is definitely the guy who, you know, is, is telling Soap not to be such a pervert. <laughs> yep. Reason. Hypocrite of the year. <laughs> um, uh, where, where was I at? Yeah, uh, where is the last... Uh, asked as much as I wanted to. Hey, Soap, come on! I shouted for him as he eagerly jumped, as he eagerly jumped on his horse and smiled at me. I smiled back and waited for her to get on first so I could get my big ass on the saddle. But she was so close to me that I pushed up against the saddle's handle and it didn't feel too good, but I just let her be that close. I wanted her to be that close. What? <laughs> Ow. All right, so uh, do do you do you want to take chapter nine? Yeah, yeah. All right, this this one's great too. You're gonna love you're gonna like this one. Chapter nine, swimming at Piper Lake, Annie's POV, immediately censored for rape. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Annie has a nightmare where she's raped in the Alhambra saloon, but Cole and Soapy come to her rescue. You took a woman who was beaten up. To a whorehouse. Or, or no, or no, even worse, it had her dream that she was in a whorehouse. Oh my god. But it was all a dream. I was lying in my room and it was pure dark except for the small window that left the moon shine in on me like the sunlight in the daytime. But was the moon in her eye like a big pizza pie? That's that's the real it, question. It may have been a moray. I wiped my face off from the sweat and couldn't find Colton or Soapy anywhere. So I crawled out of bed and realized I was in a black lace corset and black garters with matching heels. What? This we is sk we skipped yeah. something here. Yeah. Also, I I the, it's possible that uh, this this may have been written by the same woman who did my immortal. I uh, just from the the details. <laughs> um, also, the the corset is spelled corset c o r s e t t e. This is recurring throughout the entire fiction. Well, no, she just needs to put it in her corset player and it'll play music. <laughs> she needs to use an eight track, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an eight track corset. <laughs> <laughs> then I opened the door quietly without disturbing the others who had a room in the hotel as well, and I walked downstairs and noticed them down there playing a big game of poker with a big group of people. I can only assume that Buck was in there somewhere. She's in the casino in her corset. Yes. I walked down the steps gently as I tried not to let them notice me, but just before Colton took a drink from his 13th whiskey bottle, he spotted his me. His 13th and... whiskey bottle? How much damage did he take in the whorehouse? <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> he spotted me and smiled calmly. Hey, you're up. He put his arm around me for some strange reason and pulled me over to the poker game with him and some big, dirty-looking guy with a long, gray beard. 
I looked at him as he continued with his shuffling of the cards. He set them out, and they began. Cole took another swig of his whiskey and slammed it down on the poker table. He smiled and laid his cards on the table. Full House Jerry. That's that's my favorite uh, character is Full House Jerry. Yeah, Full House Jerry was amazing. Everybody suddenly cheered. That was that was actually that was actually Fuck Jerry's original name original name on uh, on Instagram before he changed it was Full House Jerry. <laughs> Everybody suddenly cheered and clapped for Colton as he smirked at the older man who had a look of disappointment on his wrinkled face. Ha <laughs> ha, let's go, soap. They walked off out of the hotel and stopped at the doorway. Hey, come on. He paused, waiting for me to give him my name. Uh, Annie. Annie Stokes. I blushed and then turned away from him, but I could still feel his eyes on me. They've been with her for an entire day, and they don't know her name. Yeah. Come on, Annie. Let's get a few drinks. He motioned for me to walk up next to him. It was midnight already, and I was still thinking about that frightening dream I had not too long ago. I really wanted to be with someone, but there was nobody for me to be with. Colton probably had someone, and Soapy must have too. Just then Colton handed me his beer bottle and told me to take a swig. I reached out for it and slowly, it slowly and thought to myself, Did I really want to drink this? If I do, I wouldn't be able to stop. I told myself and took a long drink from it and then gave it back to him. Hey, be careful there. Wait a sec. You want to have a drinking contest, me and you? <laughs> he smiled at me as I looked down and nodded in reply. Hey, two whiskeys here, my good man. Soapy wanted to buy them for us, and when the bartender was done making them, making them like it's complicated, he put them in front of us. Two for me and two for Colton. Be careful, sweet thing. He kept his eyes on me, and he took a big drink from his bottle, and I copied him and did the same thing. He's already had 13 drinks at the poker game, and he's probably going to be out in no time. But he was drinking way too much. Ah, had enough of it yet, Annie? He sm his smile was really contagious, and it made me smile as I closed my eyes and took a long, a big swig from my second whiskey bottle with his eyes glancing at me slowly. I felt something really deep for him, but I don't know what. Done, period, exclamation mark. He slammed the whiskey bottle on the table, and he did win. He drank them completely empty. I couldn't believe it. He had 15 in all and he's drank, that he's drank tonight, and he still didn't look drunk yet, and I knew I was. I well, that's what you, when you drink Budweiser. <laughs> yeah, fast, cheap, drunk. I could feel myself begin to wobble, and my vision was becoming blurry as well. Oh, no. She's gone bowling with her cousin. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah by, by the way when uh when i'm reading feel free to interrupt with any jokes you think that's, of. That's fine, man. I will. but then when i opened my eyes i was in bed again but with colton by my side and he was fast asleep he oh, had his arm again. oh no he had his arms on his chest with his hat tipped over his eyes by the way he was sleeping he must have been drunk i stopped moving just so i could look at his beautiful face his dark Indian skin was so much different from mine. My color was creamy white, very pale, but no matter the difference of our skin, I would still love to be so close to him with his burning warm skin aside my cool breezy skin. But it would be so different. Or at the okay. very least, I'd like to remember it in the morning next time. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. I seem to have sex, but never remember sex. <laughs> hmm. Oh, hey, Annie. He fixed his hat and laid it on the table right beside the bed and got up. He wobbled a bit, but not too much. Me and Soap are going to go swimming. Come with us. He grabbed me by the forearm, and I nodded back and followed him out, and outside, the, outside we went. Colton, Soap, and I walked over to the old stables and got our horses from there. Everything is so descriptive in this story, I'd like to point out she's still in a corset and heels. But yep. this time... <laughs> But this time, I didn't have to share a horse. I got on top of a creamy colored horse with a brown mane and tail. Want a, sa want a saddle? I stopped him before he continued with a shake of my head. The horse was the most beautiful one I've ever ridden, except for Papa's horse, which was such a beauty. Papa owned Shadowfax. Oh my god. <laughs> well, kid, where are we headed? Down to Piper Lake, he asked. 
is he got up on his horse and shook his feet in the stirrups while stuck Colton his, stuck, 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 excuse me, stuck, <laughs> stuck his feet, stuck his feet in the stirrups while Colton just got onto his black and gray mare, which had a dirty brown color mane and tail and had beautiful fur at the bottom of its legs. And it also looked, looked tough, but beautiful at the same time. They are describing the horse the way that porn writers describe dicks. <laughs> and yet, oddly enough, once we get to the sex scenes, they're not really that descriptive. I mean, they're descriptive of the actions, but not of the physical bodies. <laughs> yeah. Penis, vagina, let's talk horses. <laughs> You're not that far <coughs> off, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Piper Lake, if that's okay with you two. He smiled once more, this time tipping his hat at me. Let's go. We all moved our horses into, the gal into a gallop, and we were riding really fast. The ride there was really long, though. When we got there, it was so peaceful and quiet. There was a mini waterfall to go with the beautiful, serene quietness and beauty with the sun's reflected sun's reflection on the surface of the water i love the but way was it the quiet <laughs> it was it was quiet i love the way the long tall grass grew around the edges of the water and how big the flowers were we all got off our horses and i took them back but cole stopped me with a pull in my arm and i let it go of the reins just leave them there no one will take them i tried not to watch him undress but he was so magnificent being here with two gorgeous red men made me blush. I'll go in later. I just want want to rest for a bit. I took a short blanket from off my horse's saddle and laid it out on the nice grass beside the shady waterfall under the shade weeping willow tree. Also, as I put my body on the soft blanket tree, also as I put my body on the soft blanket and closed my eyes, Come I I don't understand that sense. <laughs> It's, it's it's a it's a collection of words. It, it certainly is words. I think it might have been a Scrabble board. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice out here, isn't it? I heard Soapy's voice right beside me. I looked up and smiled and smiled at him, watching him read his book, a book called "Even If You're a Gambler, Read This to Get Better." That okay. is the weirdest self help book I've ever heard of. <laughs> Soapy needs it. Well, yeah, you, got, you already got ran out of town once at Dodge, so... Uh, how not to get hung for cheating. Yeah. It was strange, but if he wanted to read it, that was fine by me. As I leaned up, I watched as Colton swam. His body was so terrific and gorgeous. <laughs> oh, my God. His dark Indian skin was so sweet on that body of his that the way... And the way he, a part of his dark hair stayed to the right side of his eyes... Almost covering his right eye. Hey, you coming in or what? Already did. Oh, Already oh, did. Oh, oh. <laughs> I could tell that he was smiling and I smiled too. So I did what I wanted to do. And came. And came again. <laughs> I stood up and started, to un and started to unlace my corset. I called it! <laughs> holding it. Holding it over my breast as I used my other free hand and slipped out of my bottoms and garters, making the boys go, ooh. <laughs> then I finally dropped my corset to the ground and found that my milkshake still brought the boys to the yard. <laughs> Where now I was finally bare naked, feeling like I was being watched, and I was. <laughs> Cry many Jim Jams, that's such a lovely bo body you got there, Annie. Soap spoke, making me blush, and Colton looked at me as well and motioned for me to join him. Once my, once my body was in the water, you ever, you ever laugh so hard you get kind of heady? I'm at that point. Once my body was in the water, I shivered a bit. Then we all got used to it. The water was actually very warm. I love swimming in the summertime when the water was is warm and the flowers bloom. Well, Annie, that was a wonderful scene you let us see. He winked what? at me. I don't understand. I do understand and I hate it. <laughs> I don't like it. The 13-year-olds can keep it. 
<coughs> oh, God. <coughs> he winked at me, and I blushed deeply. Then I realized on his fore... Then I realized on his forearms. Period. Some of the tattoos of both arms. Period. The tattoos like looked like they were going over the lines. Oh, almost like the way fishnet lines are. Period. Oh, yeah, those, yeah, those fishnet lines of the 1880s. <laughs> but on his skin, period. But I didn't want to ask him what they were, period. Too many periods. <laughs> I swam closer to him, and I put my hand under the water and wrapped it around his forearm and began stroking it gently, like gently feeling his well-formed muscles Whenever I went up on his arm. What, you like them? Period, question mark. He asked me as I looked at his tattoos again. I nodded my head yes and blushed again. Too many periods. You should have sent some back. Yeah. Or turn Col them into semicolons. Turn them into semicolons, for God's sakes. Cole, there is something I always wanted to say to you since I have met you. I spoke quietly, but he wouldn't let me say a word. Just be quiet. <laughs> he got me backed up on the edge of the water side, and I felt him stroke my legs carelessly as he went under the water, and then popped back out of the surface, closing his eyes, trying to get the water out, and smiled again at me as he came so close to my face. I thought he was about to kiss me, but I wasn't ready. I couldn't do this no matter how bad I wanted to. I had to admit it was a 24-year-old virgin. Only in the only only in the sense of consensual sex. Yeah, they're they're it, this is the problem again. They're they're trying to have it both ways, having her as the tragic rape victim and also as the virgin who needs to be taught love by the uh, the by, virgin by the hunky, western uh, the flower romance. Yeah, you, you can't have it both ways. It's one or the other. If you're gonna have one horrible, uh, you know, uh, female archetype in, in your western. Pick one. Don't go for both. Okay. I had to admit I was a 20-year-old <coughs> virgin <coughs> and it would be embarrassing if they knew. You know, you're very pretty when you were standing up there and you're very pretty now. Your beautiful, be your beautiful blue eyes, he whispered silently as he held the back of my wet head and forced my body against his <laughs> with his <laughs> with his lips against mine. <laughs> It's one of those scenes that could be romantic, but you had to phrase it in the worst way possible. <laughs> None of these people know what sex is. Hmm, wait, Cole, I can't. I tried to get him off and he obeyed. He didn't want to start a fight with me. I began to swim away from him, and I, then I popped under the surface and swam all the way until I reached the surface again. And was getting drenched under a waterfall. He was already out of the water and had a towel wrapped around his waist and he watched me as I swam and under the shady weeping willow tree he sat. Oh, turn into Yoda again. Mm hmm? They're turning into Yoda again. Read it again. Under the shady weeping willow tree he sat. Under the shady weeping willow tree he sat. It's, it's Germanic grammar. Oh boy. <laughs> he smiled and stuck his feet in the water and I swam up in between his legs and rested my elbows on his lap putting not as much weight on it I could feel my long brown hair pressed to my back and I could feel my eyelashes drip with water while my lips stayed moist with lust and water oh boy you're beautiful and I'm sorry for what I did <laughs> I just couldn't I just think I got a little carried away I watched him put his hat back on, and I popped back under the water when he laid on the grass with his legs still dangling in the water, waiting to be grabbed and pulled under. But then I noticed some of the wild Indians came into the water undressed, all the men into the water undressed, and all the men came splashing in the water. But that didn't bother me because they were the nice ones. <laughs> and actually, it was kind of scary that I'm only female out here, <laughs> and there are like twelve <laughs> other men. <laughs> But then finally a woman came in too. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Annie, if you get to 100,000 Indians in the lake, Pornhub will send you a track jacket. 
And she was right beside me in the water. She was so beautiful and she was so kind to me. She had long black hair and dark Indian skin, like Cole's, but hers was much darker. <laughs> Hello, my name is Kohana. I love your hair. <laughs> she commented on it as she ran her dark Indian fingers through it, and I closed my eyes and didn't even realize that Cole was up and watching me. My name is Kohana. I love your hair. Prepare to die. <laughs> My name is Kohana. I love your hair. That scalping mechanic is getting a payoff. <laughs> <laughs> Press B to scalp. <laughs> oh. I mean, she has to be alive but dazed, and she's clearly alive but dazed. <laughs> Yahoo! I heard a big splash, and up out of, off the surface of the water came Soapy. He was well built too. Nice features, but not as good as Colton. He smiled at me and I smiled back. Then I wrapped my arms around his neck and pulled him in for a hug. Friendly hug. Naked hug. <laughs> your best friend and I could you're the best friend I could ever want, Soapy. Right then I kissed him on the cheek and he tried so hard to hug me back, but I guess he was too nervous to. I let go of him and he blushed deep deeply. Why thank you, darling. You're sweet too. He planted a quick one on my neck and got out of the water and sat next to Cole with a towel wrapped around his waist too. In what in what alternate universe is Soapy well built? <laughs> Apparently this one. They both looked at me and I continued talking. No, I figured it out. Apparently when you rehydrate Soapy, he gets muscles. <laughs> oh, okay. That's how it works. They both looked at me and I continued talking to Kohana. She was so beautiful and so spiritual in her looks and in her eyes. But well, but while she was in the water, she wore a striped necklace around her neck. Indian necklace. And so did Colton. He and her had the same ones. I was confused here. Hey, Cole. I spoke towards him as he resumed his glance at me. Yes? What, you wonder about those necklaces, aren't you? Period. Question mark. He raised an eyebrow and smiled. Well, an Indian friend of mine, many wounds, gave his wife Kohana that necklace, and fights at dawn gave me this one. He finished his sentence, and he was, as, as he was leaned backwards on his eyebrow, elbows, removing his hat from his damp hair, and never took his eyes off me. So apparently, he's married to many wounds. I'm glad that so. I'm glad that that uh, they remember that fights at dawn exists. <laughs> I'm, I'm just do I'm just doing a quick check, and this is the only time that Fights of Dawn is referenced in the entire fanfic, by the way. But at least, <laughs> at least they actually, uh, all right. Uh, given that, given the length of that, do you want me to take part two? Yeah, please. All right. Okay, part two. Meeting many wounds. While everyone was still in the lake, and Colton and Soapy were still resting by the edge, a handsome Indian with many tattoos and a red headband around his head came in the lake as well. Oh dear. I noticed him swimming this way, but he was probably the one Cole was talking to me about. Kohana, Kola is waiting for you. He pointed his finger at a young little Indian girl who was playing by the edge of the water, nude like the rest of us. She nodded her head and swam away. The young Indian walked out of the water and stood up before Colton, but it was kind of creepy seeing a man nude right in front of you. But it didn't bother me as much. He spoke to Cole in some Indian language that I couldn't even I couldn't understand even one bit, but it wasn't any of my business. So I continued with my enjoyment of the lake. I swam all the way over to the other side where the Indians were, and when I looked at their faces, they smiled and some waved. As I helped myself out of the water, I felt uncomfortable without my clothes, but I guess it was an Indian thing, so I played along with their culture. The Uncunfer table, where they left their clothes. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Kahana. Your daughter's beautiful, just like her mother, whoever she is. <laughs> I smiled and I smiled and sat down right beside Kohana and her young toddler, trying to braid Cola's raven black hair. Kohana, would you want me to braid your hair as well? When I'm finished with Cola's, you would look, you would look very beautiful. I smiled once more and she smiled too, nodding her head in reply as I continued with Cola's hair. After I was finished, I tied the ends of the two braids with rubber bands, and each of them looked well braided and stayed in perfectly. Rubber bands? Thought... Yeah. 
Yep. Oh, I never God. thought being in Indian territory would be this fun. I guess Cole liked his culture as well. <sighs> okay. When I decided to look across from me on the other side of the river, I noticed... Uh, oh, shit, where is it? Uh, I noticed a sort of big man with a broken arm and saw the Indian with many tattoos walk over here instead of swimming. Unda! The little child ran up to her father, and he carried her in his arms and headed towards us as I began to start Uncle Hannah's hair next. You know, Ani, you're such a sweet lady. Her Indian accent, her Indian accent spoke words differently, and I smiled at her nice words. As I was finishing up putting on her, putting her rubber pants in, I noticed Colton was crouched down beside me with his towel still around his waist. I see you and Kahana are friends, period, question mark. He put his hat on his head, and when I finished up with her braids, she smiled at me and gave me a friendly hug. Thank you. She sat down beside her husband and her little child. I watch them so much. I just wish I had someone to love like that. But suddenly, Colton grabbed me by the arm and pulled me up off the grassy ground and we both jumped into the lake at the same time. When he popped his head out of the water, hopefully still attached to the rest of his body, he didn't know what he did with his towel when he jumped in. He knew he didn't leave it on, but he didn't care really as long as his pants were nearby. I smiled at him as he smiled back and whipped his ears full of water and pulled me closer to him. I felt the same pain hit my side again, but it wasn't frightened pain, it was happy pain. Ooh. I was so shocked to see him like this towards me. As he leaned his face in towards mine again, I closed my eyes and we were about to touch lips again. But something had to ruin it by throwing a large horse in the lake. Um, is that... Uh, good, I asked, watching as it began to doggy paddle. <laughs> a horse doggy... Can you imagine a horse doggy paddling? <laughs> they do. He... But oh. it... <laughs> he, he nodded his head and suddenly kissed me roughly this time, holding me tight. Uh... Okay, I think I'll take chapter 10 as well. It's pretty short, and then you can have chapter 11. All right. All right. Chapter 10. Can't help but love you. As I opened my eyes to the new day, I realized that everyone was out here, but still... Uh, out here still, but they were in their Indian tents, and Colton, Soapy, and I were out lying in the grass, covered up in small blankets. Ah! I yawned, feeling the dampness of my hair still, as I found Cole lying a few inches away from me, and Soapy was lying on the other side of me a few inches away too. Just before I got up, I was pulled back down with a strong grab of my arm. I shrieked, but realized it was Colton. Wait, is this still recording? Mine is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mine is, but... Um... Hold on, let me check here. Hello? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's still recording. All right. Yeah, it was just... It froze a little bit, but all right. Realized it was Colton. I smiled at him and he let go. I couldn't keep my eyes off his skin and his whole self. He was a gorgeous man and I loved him dearly. I love it when you're naked, Annie. <laughs> Your body is wonderful and eye-catching. Even many wounds said you were a beauty in body and look. He announced to me as I removed the blanket from me and dove into the lake for a morning swim. Annie, we're going to have to get something to eat pretty soon. He spoke as he, as he was leaned up on his elbows again, without his hat continually watching as I swam. When we all got dressed again and said our goodbyes to the Indians, I got our horses and jumped up on mine and put my cowgirl boots in the stirrups, and it whinnied when I did. Okay, so did the cow... What whinnied? The cowgirl boots or the stirrups? The I think the stirrups. Are, yeah, the stirrups had to have whinnied. Come on, Soap. We're out of here for today. He put his hat on his head 
as Soapy got on his horse and we each rode our horses into a gallop going into town. Empire. With Colton being the leader of this little group, we had to go down to the hotel again and I needed some rest. More rest than I could ever get. I just couldn't sleep well last night. Well, Soap, when you get back, tell us. Cole waved goodbye to Soapy as he went to order our breakfast. As I walked into the hotel's main room, there were a group of folks playing a game of poker again, and Cole paid no attention to that. Hey, Andy, a game of poker sounds entertaining, doesn't it? Let's play a long round. He smiled little, walking beside me as, as I put my hands on my hips, shook my head. No more poker today, but I finally got it once I went back over his sent hands he spoke to me. I didn't know what to say or reply back, but I walked upstairs into my room and Colton shut and locked the door behind him. Hey, Annie, I'm sorry if you don't want to. I finally heard the sadness in his voice. I just haven't seen a woman like you before, and I guess I have a huge love crush on you. <laughs> no, it's not one of those platonic crushes, it's a love crush. Love crush. He lied down with his hat over his eyes and his right foot crossed over his other. I sat on the foot of the bed and thought and thought. I think I wanted to. I just wanted to finally get into Manta with someone I really like. I wanted him badly. Oh no, just... not into Manta. <laughs> I wanted him badly. Just thinking about him made my stomach turn. Cole, I put my body on his and he tipped his hat off his head, and he pulled me down hard, kissing me gently this time. I grabbed a hold of his back and squeezed when he was on his knees and I was in his arms with his mouth enjoying my neck. <laughs> I always liked you, Annie, he whispered. For three I, days. I think, I, think that's been, I think that's been well established at this point. Ever since I met you, I thought you were beautiful. He spoke again between breaths as I tugged on his ammo belt that was strapped around him, and and he pulled my long hair in a playful way, making my head go backwards and presumably snapping my neck. Scalping mechanic, round two. <laughs> he, then, he then continued to kiss my neck and then my chin going up until he reached my lips and pressed his to mine. Slowly slipping his tongue inside my mouth, making me shiver with passion. I didn't know what I really wanted, this or not. So I pushed him gently away from me, and he looked at me with a look of confusion on his face. Hey, what's wrong? Tell me, Annie. He leaned up towards me again, but I stepped foot off the bed and smiled. I'm sorry, but I have to get going. I'll be back later. I walked out before him and left the hotel, with Colton not even chasing after me like I thought he would. I guess that is what I wanted to do, not to have sex until I'm ready for it and badly craving for it. Well, that was quite the chapter, wasn't it? That's... Got y'all hot, got you all hot I, and bothered. I am, I am hot and bothered. <laughs> all right. Chapter 11. Chapter 11, Serious Operation, Soapy's POV. It was very hot out today in Empire, and folks were out walking around like nobody's business. I sat down on the hotel steps and looked down between my legs on the dirt ground, onto the dirt ground. Why? Why do I like Annie so? I could never get her out of my head for a second, and whenever she was with Colton, I couldn't help but stare. I thought to myself, covering my head with my hands like a tornado was... To was to hit but then i noticed colton riding into town on his horse and he stopped it right as he jumped off and tied the reins to a post as he walked past me just like he didn't even know i was here he was in his deputy outfit he wore his hat a brown leather vest with a white long sleeve shirt on underneath also with dark brown leather pants but i don't didn't see no holster i didn't see no his host holster belt only his regular big buckled belt around his waist. Hey kid, what's wrong? Period question mark. I asked, following him into the into the Hoodoo's hotel. He tried not to notice me behind him, but I knew something was wrong. Cole. I rested my hand on his right shoulder and he stopped walking. 
What is it, Soapy? Period, question mark. He spoke softly and almost angrily as he turned around to face me. I removed my hand and looked at him. Why are you so quiet and not like yourself? Period, question mark. I added, but right after I released those words, he grabbed me by the jacket and thumped me against the wall. What? You're saying I'm not myself? And why is that? Period, question mark. I could tell now that he was angry and upset. I don't know. It's just like something bad happened to you, kid. I whispered as he suddenly let me go and sat down with his back up against the wall and his, his, and his, his, knees. his knees up as he put his hands between them. And he does not care for me anymore. It's been three days, dickhead! Yeah. <laughs> his voice seemed so sad and hurt. I had to do something, but I liked her too. Hey, I'll be back, kid. I'm going back to the hideout. I waved goodbye and walked out of the hotel, and away I gone. Away, away I gone. You can take part two as well. Yeah. Part two, Annie. Cole's POV. Okay. It was two in the afternoon, and I still haven't seen Annie around here for a while now. I haven't seen her all today. I really missed her, and I couldn't do anything but sit here and wait. But as I got back up, I saw her downstairs in the main hall, talking to some other guy. He looked fancy, just like her. And that's something I wasn't. Fancy. She looked more beautiful than ever with her long golden brown hair curled up in a bun, with a blue and white umbrella in her small hands, and her beautiful blue dress with matching heels on her feet. She didn't look happy at all, though. And the other man that came in was Reed? That son of a bitch don't is gonna pay... <laughs> that son of a bitch is gonna pay for what he did to Annie. Reed! Period! Exclamation mark. I ran down and into the main hall and pulled out my dual peacemakers but without even knowing it I was shot to the ground and so was Annie the only things I could hear were fight, frightening screams of folks running around and Annie gasping for air so I managed to get off my back and on my hands and knees holding my bullet wound with my right hand over my stomach making my way towards her body hey shh, everything's gonna be alright I spoke leaning over her and I swooped her Swooped her up, swooped her up, swooped her up in my arms as best I could, leaning on one knee, and then then stood up on both legs, carrying her outside. Oh my gosh, someone get a doctor! I noticed a young wo woman who attracted the attracted the attention of more scared people as one ran over my way. He fell to his knees once he saw that her and I were shot, but she was worse than me. We have to get you two to the hospital. He and some other men were around us with a horse-drawn wagon outside the hotel. Both helped her inside it slowly, and I stepped in as well and off the wagon went. After the long ride there, the driver opened the door and let us out. Come on, ma'am, you're bleeding badly, the man spoke as he helped her step down. I watched as they carefully stood her on her feet, but before she fell to the ground, she fell into me, and I caught her in my arms. I'm sorry I wasn't here earlier, but I'm here now, she smiled at me weakly closing her eyes as I carried her all the way inside the Alhambra, which is not a hospital. A few people put two tables together and took her from my arms, lying her down on them as the bartender put a cloth in her mouth and told her to bite down hard as he moved her hair from her forehead. Doctor, be careful with her. I spoke anxiously, covering my wound again, and went over to her side. Don't cry. I wiped her tears away and kissed her forehead, letting the doctor do what he needs, needs to do. Colton, I love you. I heard those words pass me, and I stood by her side, holding her hand tightly. Be strong, okay? I removed my hat from my head and watched as the doctor began to work. Well, I mean, they they would have had a call, uh, a like a, a a call a call in doctor. Or yeah. Like, uh, the, the the company or the um the town doctor that uh, that would have I guess the Alhambra was like the the only place big enough. Yeah. So you left um, the hotel to put her in a wagon. To take her to a hospital, but ended up at the Alhambra, which is another hotel. Slash whorehouse. Slash whorehouse. Really, it's a whorehouse with a hotel in it. <laughs> All right. it's, it's apparently also a hospital. Yeah. You know, on the side. Or, uh, all right. I'll, I'll take chapter 12 then. Yeah, okay. All right. Chapter 12. Stealing your love. After her operation was done, her face was dripping with sweat, and her teeth were aching full of pain as she bit down on the cloth to keep her from screaming out in pain while the operation begun. But it was over now, 
and her stitches were already in too. Two men helped her down and they fixed the tables and put them where they belong. I still felt like shit and I think the bullet went in and out the other side. Uh, period, period. I fell on my stomach and the doctor helped me up and rested me down on the bartender's counter. Oh shoot, this one is bad, I heard him say as I suddenly felt him rip open my shirt with a pull of the buttons. All right. Uh, and he looked at it in frustration. Colton, this would hurt quite a bit, so get ready. I felt bunch of pain fill my bullet wound, as if, with a capital I, he was trying to stitch me up. And he was. After my stomach wound was patched up, I was on my stomach carefully, and he was patching up my back wound as well. Um... Okay, they, they didn't think to put him on his side, I guess? Ah, I screamed. Oh, they didn't actually put a period exclamation mark that time. They actually did it right. <laughs> good, good on you, such a careless whisper. Once, uh, on, uh, on at least one time, he actually used the exclamation mark properly. Ah, I screamed that time when he accidentally stitched through the wrong spot. Sorry, Colton, he apologized, but I didn't take it. Then after... I was done being patched up. I forced myself out of his grasp. Get the hell off me! Period. Exclamation mark. I cursed as I buttoned my shirt back up and put my brown leather vest back on over it, taking Annie's hand, and walked out of the Alhambra. Once we got outside, Annie pushed away from me and backed up a couple inches from me. Why would y'all curse at that man for trying to stitch you back up? Are you crazy, Colton? Period question mark. She began to get furious with me. Well, I'm sorry. Because I was in pain. He fucking stabbed me with a needle. Period, period, Annie. What else was I supposed to do? Period question mark. I started to shout, attracting attention now, realizing I had hurt her feelings by shouting at her. Hey, Annie, I'm sorry. Please don't do this. I watched as she walked away from me, and I followed close behind her. I'm sorry, Cole, but I must leave, she spoke, walking faster, but I caught her from behind and pulled her back into me. I love you. Don't leave me like this, I whispered to, I whispered to her as she stopped fussing, and I let her go. Oh, Cole, she smiled, wrapping her arms around my neck as I picked her up by the waist and hugged her back tightly, then standing her back up on her feet. I don't even doing... want to think about what the choreography is for that sequence. Yeah, they're doing um, pretty well for having just been shot. Yeah. Let's go get a room, I suggested, as she stopped and turned around. Oh, and they're about to have sex as well, <laughs> just after, right after getting shot. Perfect yeah, well, timing! Yep. Uh, uh, she looked like she didn't want to do anything like that with me at all. I don't fucking blame her. <laughs> Her She's smart. Was, she ain't gonna get shot twice. Um, her face was telling it all. Is there something you're not telling me? Period. Question mark. I asked her impatiently, crossing my arms. Yes, Colton. Or sorry, yes, Colton. I'm 27 and I am a virgin. Uh, apparently she's aged three years since uh, she last established her age. She was 24 <laughs> earlier, remember? Yep. <laughs> she looked down when those words passed her lips. I looked at her in shock. And put my arm around her. Hey, don't worry. We don't have to be that close if you don't want to. Like you should have told me this before Why? I spoke. Walking towards the Alhambra. <laughs> ah, my stomach. She groaned, holding her stomach in pain as I sat down. As sat her down the table in the corner of the Alhambra by the window. Hey, Luke. <laughs> You have some medical alcohol I can use. I asked the bartender, and he walked towards me with a bottle in his hand. Yep, but be careful with this, kid. He looked at me, then at Andy. This someone new, Colton, period, question mark? He asked as he winked at me and headed back to the counter. I mean, yeah, he's a sexist pig, but he at least understands what's going on. Uh, I turned my attention back onto her, but she looked upset. Do you have someone else, period, question mark, she asked in anger. They, they haven't even consummated this relationship, and they're already fighting about adultery. I can't believe this. Um, I, I looked down at my feet, then back at her, and scooted my chair closer to her, making a big, long squeak with two E's as I did. 
I shook my head lightly and removed my hat again. I like you, Annie. Believe me. I stood up from my chair and leaned in to put some alcohol on her stitches that were aching so bad. Lift up your dress. I whispered quietly to her, but she blushed and didn't obey. Not here, Cole. She got up from her chair and pulled me upstairs with her. Also, here, here's a horse glitch. That is only saves like a few seconds, but I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, she got up from her chair and pulled me upstairs with her. There, now I can. She spoke as she lifted it from the bottom all the way up until I could see her corset. With two T's. <laughs> uh, sit down. She obeyed and I got on my knees below her legs so I could do it easier. Oh my. Hold still. I spoke quietly. When I put some of it on her stitches, she grunted a bit. That stings. She smiled and I put the bottle on the small table near me with the two candles on top. I just looked into her blue crystal eyes until she snapped me out of it. Then I leaned up and kissed her gently, pulling her on top of me as I lie back, lie my back on the wooden floor with my knees up around her, putting my arms up around her tightly until I could feel her breasts up against my chest. Oh, Cole, she smiled and resumed her kissing, but this time she tugged on my vest. You want this off, do you? Period question mark. I whispered, gasping as I let go of her lips. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I unbuttoned my vest for her, and she did the honors of taking the rest of it off. While she oh. reached while she reached her hand up my long sleeved undershirt and stroked my skin. I I I tingled under the touch of her hand, touching my skin. I want your pants off, she announced in my ear silently, as I did, oh. but only unbuttoned and unbuckled my belt. Are you sure you want to do this? If you do, there's no going back. I told her, and she nodded her head without smiling. <laughs> What's with that detail? Why wouldn't she be smiling? But I decided to let her hand roam free around in my trousers if she wanted. And she did before I even told her to. It's hard to smile when your tongue's hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> mm, whoa! Period! Exclamation mark. I jumped up a bit from her soft touch. And she smiled at that. She leaned down and kissed me again. And this time, she had my arms pinned up above my head so I couldn't touch her just yet. After we were fully nude, I was on top of her this time, and to my waist down, I sat between her legs as her back was on the floor. Hold still, Annie. This will hurt. <laughs> it's a bit ominous. I held onto her hips and resumed to kiss her, just as I thrust myself into her, making her lips scream out to me in pain. Oh, good gosh! I, I read that in Goofy's voice. She was like, oh, gosh. She grunted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. That tickles. While I continued with my painful thrusts, I felt my body tightened in pain and my stitches pulled whenever I thrusted. So I went carefully into her. Ah, a, a just regular exclamation mark. She screamed in pain as her fingernails jammed into my back with such power. It made a grunt past my lips. As her marvelous body moved up and down with each thrust I made, I felt my stitches sting like hell. And I knew I had to stop, but I didn't. Uh, hyphen quote. I heard her groan as she threw her head back on the floor and I kissed her neck. Oh, shoot. Period. Exclamation mark. Oh, God. I forgot about this. <laughs> I forgot if Oh sentence. no. <laughs> okay, you, I'm gonna try No, to no, you have straight. to read it. You have I, to read it. I know, I am, but I'm gonna try to read this with a straight face. Okay. <clears throat> uh let me just take a water break here, so I am gonna try to read this with a straight face. Okay. Alright. Uh oh shoot. Period exclamation mark. I gasped for air as she and I noticed dark, thick blood escape her vagina. But she didn't care as long as the pain was finally gone. 
See, see, this is the specific detail that I think is one of the key um, reasons that I, I think this was written by, um, by by a teenage girl as opposed to anyone else. Because this sounds, I mean, this is like one of the uh, sort of the, the myths that get that still gets passed around in in uh, in health classes that 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 the hymen always breaks for, for a virgin. Yep. Or, sorry, that no, not that it breaks, that that it bleeds when broken. And there, yeah. there's there's one other detail that comes up later, which I think sounds like um, a uh, it sounds like a uh, something a mother would say to her daughter uh, to um, uh, to stop uh, sexual promiscuity. But we'll, we'll we'll get to that later. All right, <laughs> back to the back to the amazing sex here. Oh, it's awesome. Ooh. Ooh, that hurt like hell. She tried to speak as she moaned instead while my hands were examining her body and squeezing everything that loves to be squeezed. And yet another moan escaped Found a pimple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yet another, and another moan escaped her loudly this time. I began to start a little harder, but not too fast, as I nibbled on her creamy white flesh. <laughs> But I soon had to stop. The stitches were getting bad, and I did stop. I removed myself from her and Laya on my back, with her head resting on my heaving chest. I'm sorry we didn't get to finish, but you probably know why. I closed my eyes and tried to speak between my breaths of air as she got up from the floor and got dressed, as I did the same. But all the blood on the floor was no problem. The bartender will clean that up as well when he's gone for the night. When he's gone for the night, he'll just turn the Roomba on. They got what rubber bands? Why not a Roomba at this point? The Roomba's gonna paint with numbers in that room. And and that that amount of blood is like nothing nothing new for the Alhambra bartender. I mean, did, did you did you see how much blood there was when we rescued that one whore during the? Uh, uh, like during one of the first um, yeah. uh, Denton side quests. Yeah, he just he just finishes up for the day. Jesus Christ, is it Thursday again? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to loop the video because we're like there's yeah. like 20 minutes we're, left, we're, and we're, we're like uh, we're like two thirds <laughs> of the way through it. <laughs> All right, when I got my undershirt back on and my pants, I put my brown vest over the white undershirt and then put on my boots. Let's get going, I spoke, and took her by the hand, walking out of the Alhambra. I'll, I'll, never, get a, I'll, I'll never get enough of them putting all caps um, on the uh, locations from this point forward. And they just all of a sudden started doing that. I don't know why. All right. I, uh, uh, all right. I just, I, I, I just uh, briefly have to, I have to check on something. I'll be... Uh, I'll be right back, but uh, you, you can take chapter 13 in the meantime. That's what I'm saying. All right. Okay. Chapter 13. Revenge! Port's POV. Point of view. It was something about today that just didn't seem right. I knew I was still missing Clay, but I don't know why Cole and Soapy ain't been here for quite a while now. I was just getting up out of my tent when I noticed a small, cute young lady. She had golden brown hair that fell to her back in a red flannel undershirt with a vest and blue jeans with brown leather chaps around them. Even with cute brown leather cowgirl boots and not to mention her cowgirl hat. She looked like an angel from heaven to me. Clay would have loved her. Oh yes, he would. Howdy, ma'am. The name's Port, and you are? I asked, tipping my hat to the lovely lady as she smiled politely and spoke. My name is Annie, sir. Soapy brought me here for a bit to look around and get used to being here. Her voice was like a melodic chime blowing in the dusty wind. Okay, would you have a seat? I sat down right, sat her down right beside me on the log next to the fire pit and handed her my whiskey bottle. Um, no thank you. She smiled again and I smiled back. I tipped my hat over my eyes and thought for a moment. I knew I could get her in the tent with me if I tried, but then again she might try to run, I thought to myself as I drew a circle in the dirt with a stick I picked up out of the corner of my eye. Picked up, and out of the corner of my eye was Cole and Soapy. I apologize, folks. This one is hard to follow. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, kid. Have y'all met her? This beautiful woman? 
period question mark i asked as cole and soapy had a seat too and cole smiled at her yes yes i know her well her his smile disappeared from his face as he grabbed a whiskey bottle from the ground and drank the last bit from it before it was midnight all the henchmen and we all too got together and we all too got together again and had a good time with chavez playing fiddle and some of the henchmen square dancing with one another while some Yeehaw. others played a game well, some others played a game of poker on the ground. I don't think this night would have, would never be forgotten. You don't watched, think it never would be forgotten? I don't think this night would never be forgotten. So I immediately forgot it. I immediately forgot it. <laughs> you remember that night? Nope, immediately forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> I watched and listened to some of the boys head down to the little river stream down there and jump in screaming and yahooing their lungs out. Hey, why don't we all make this one spe special for Clay? I announced as I raised my whiskey bottle up high and I wasn't alone. For Clay! Period exclamation mark. All the boys yelled out and then finished their fun time. I think I had a bit too much of whiskey and I was woozing all over the place. I had to piss so bad I could so bad so I undid my trousers and peed inside someone's tent on accident <laughs> and shouting yahoo period exclamation mark but nobody seemed to care when I was done I zipped them back up and sat back down near the wildfire and talked with soap Cole and Annie oh god I just I just realized what chapter this is <laughs> Sorry. and there's what 22 yeah but, no I, but I like what what like <coughs> specifically what chapter this is like with which plot points ah but before I said a word, everybody went dead silent. Only the sounds of the night crickets chirping and the sound of the waterfall. Oh my god, period, exclamation mark, someone shouted as everyone else ran wildly, and that startled, startled us. What the hell, period, exclamation mark. I looked over the edge, and there stood right before my eyes was Clay. Oh my god, he's back! No, no, it can't be you. It's not. I tried to tell myself, but it didn't work. Everybody soon stopped and watched and walked towards us. But, but, but boys, he fell over on his stomach, and he looked like he was in pain. Clay, period, exclamation mark. I didn't care if he was dead or not. I had to help him. Clay, you all right, period, question mark. But when I looked down at him, he still had the same wound from a couple weeks back when he was supposedly dead. Supposedly. supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. S-U-P-P-O-S-I-V-E-L-Y. <laughs> You're not dead, but how? Period, space, question mark. <laughs> That's a new one. <coughs> All over the board. I asked him anxiously, shaking him a bit. He put his gloved hand on my hand and smiled. I wasn't dead. I was alive, but I guess the doctor thought I was dead because of no pulse. P-A-L-S-E. He began to chuckle. Okay. <laughs> He began right. to chuckle, and then a cough came up as Colton came down beside me. This is not the place to do that, Cole. Come on. Keep it in your pants. <laughs> Clay, you're alive, but Clay stopped him with his finger to his own lips and smiled again. Big fucking mistake the doc made. He chuckled again, but another <laughs> cough came back up. So, so how, how does Clay even get out of this? Like, did he have to break out of the coffin? The, the the one inch punch from Kill Bill. <laughs> we gotta do something. Cole and I lifted him up with me carrying his feet and Colton at his arms while we helped him up the hill to our hideout. Clay. One of his henchmen smiled with a tear in his eye as they all shouted for his existence. Come on, we gotta get him up here. Someone spoke as two henchmen lifted him up on a stretcher and put him into his large tent. I need the first aid kit right now! Period exclamation mark. I shouted and I got someone to get it for me. Just relax, Clay. Tell me what happened. I looked at his wound and then back down at him as I put some alcohol on his bloody wound. Oh, this has been a week, kids. It's going to take a lot more than alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> well, but boys... It was when I was lying on the ground next to my henchman when I got shot. Yes, it was a bullet wound. Don't know which way it came from, but it happened. He stood and coughed to ignore the... He stopped and coughed to ignore the burning pain of the alcohol. Then what next? Tell us, Clay. 
It was the Cole weirdest spoke. thing. I drank some whiskey, and all of a sudden, I was back to my old self again. <laughs> Cole spoke as he went on again when I put the bottle of alcohol down and then went for the bandages to wrap around his stomach. Well, then I realized I was in this tent, my tent surrounded by you boys and by the doctor. He spoke and tried again. Then I remember the doctor giving me a shot when I didn't even need it. He clo- he already had one. <laughs> he closed his <laughs> eyes and coughed again. That no good lying piece of shit doctor. <laughs> ER, I shouted. He's going to pay and going to pay good. I grinned evilly, but Clay told me to calm down before I lose my temper again. And I calmed down just like he told me to. Magic. We'll take down this doctor together, right? Period, question mark. I raised my unbroken fist in the air and shouted, and all the henchmen shouted after me, right? Period, exclamation mark. They raised their fist too. Play. All right, you know what? Forget that. I'm going gonna, gonna to name my grunge band Unbroken Fist. Unbroken Fist. Even yeah. better. Clay, you're free to get your shirt back on. You're all wrapped up and ready to walk around. I patted him on the back, and it was quickly turned into a hug. Okay. Thank you, Port. You done well. He smiled as I let him go, and when he stepped out of the tent, he raised his hand on, into a fist, and we all shouted at him, and every one of us cheered loudly. Back to your party, Clay shouted at everyone, and they all cheered and got back to what we were doing before, we, before but much, much happier. But that's... That's we... 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 W H E we Clay noticed the young woman. They both looked at each other in shock, and Colton and I watched in confusion. To be continued. Just had to make it big enough. Tee hee. That's what she said. <laughs> there are. I have several a questions. Shit I have several questions. There's a shitload wrong with this chapter. Everything's wrong with this chapter. This whole chapter is wrong. Yeah. Just take this chapter out of the story, leave the character dead, and be done with it. Come on! This is what happens when you don't edit uh, edit chapters retroactively. You just have to keep going forward with your fan fiction. Otherwise, people wrote, are going to think the fig is dead. I wrote chapter 13 first, and I wrote chapter 1 next. And then I didn't realize there were going to be 11 other chapters in between. <laughs> yeah, so I threw in all the characters banging just to fill in the time between the two. All right, I'm, calling, need, dibs I, on, I'm calling dibs on this next chapter. All right, go for it. You're all right. up. All right, chapter 14. Best mistake. Author's note. This is for a special soapy fan friend of mine. Hope you enjoy. And I'm sure all two of them did. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, poor Dave Wittenberg. You deserve better than this. Cole's point of view. It was past midnight now, and Port and I were so confused. Clay and Annie must have seen each other somewhere, or maybe they just know each other. Clay? Is that you? Period? Question mark. Annie smiled and walked closer to him. Annie, that is you. He smiled too and ran towards her to hug her tightly. And he did. What? Period? Question mark. Port and I said at the same time. Clay turned around and smiled with his arm around her. This is my papa's old friend. That is how I remember him. Her face looked up at him and he looked down at her. Yep, boys, I used to babysit her when she was just a little thing for her pa on his ranch. He brushed his mustache and smiled. Holly Moses! <laughs> it's a special type of flower. <laughs> Holly Moses, I just can't believe how older you got me. You're so beautiful, just like I always thought you'd be. Three whole exactly. years and two days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's 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 a clone who's uh, at rapidly advanced aging. It's allowed her to age three years in just a couple of weeks. He sat down on the log beside the fire and had his arm wrapped around her still, which made me a little jealous. Okay. Weird priorities. So, so I sat down too beside them and leaned in towards the dirt ground, taking a swig from my whiskey bottle as my back was bent over in a regular sitting position with my right hand between my legs, oh dear, and the other hand holding my whiskey. God damn it, period, ex period, exclamation mark. I cursed quietly as I struggled to loosen my red bandana that was around my neck. 
I was in my black clothing, except for my bandana, obviously. I had my sleeves rolled up so my tattoos shown, and around my left sleeve was a red bandana as well. I also had two ammo belts around me. One going across the other, just like an X. After the long, drunk, wild party last night, I woke up on the dirt with my hat over my eyes. Hmm, period, question mark? I was awakened up with a kick of someone's boot. I lifted my hat to uncover my eyes, and it was just Clay. He had his usual expression on his face as I got up off my ass. What a night, I said to myself as I looked around for Annie, and I found her asleep in Clay's tent and the little spring bed. Now I think Clay was getting a little too far with this Annie business, and it was kind of getting on my last nerve. So when Annie woke up and made her way out of the tent, she was already dressed in new clothes. The top she wore was like Jenny's was, but it was blue and her long skirt was white, and she also wore long fishnets and high boots on her feet. Just like a whore. And she was a whore. Well, I, I remember she, uh, she's a, uh, she actually is an old, uh, a former prostitute in this canon. As opposed oh to actually being like she is. As opposed to uh, being a, a rancher like she is in uh, Red Dead Revolver. What she needed was to get a job at the Alhambra or Hoodoo's Casino. <laughs> th that, will, that will never get old. No. Once we got there, I met face to face with Mayor Hoodoo. When, and he was in his mayor suit and his big fucking hat. Finally, we agree on something. <laughs> Back from the dead, assholes! Well, remember, pretty much all of the major antagonists have been are brought back from the dead, except for Magruder. Well, hello, Colton. Nice to see you again. I knew he was being sarcastic, but there is a woman present. <laughs> and who may this lovely lady be? He took her by the hand and she giggled. Let her go. Come on, Soapy. We're off again. I forced her on her horse, and Soapy got on himself, and I led them to the old saloon downtown, away from that fucking creep. Yeah, Cole, Cole's uh, getting back to his old possessive self again as, uh, as well, I see. Let's get a couple drinks, kid. I'm thirsty. Soapy found us a table, and I got us some whiskey. Or that will magically turn into beer, probably, by the end of this chapter. There, drink up. When I, got a, when I got to the table, I leaned my chair back and put my hat over my eyes again, crossing my arms while keeping my feet on the top of the table for balance of my chair. But before I knew it, <laughs> it was eight at night, and Soapy and Annie were completely drunk. Yeah, have y'all heard about the one that went moo? Annie said something that didn't even make sense one bit. Even by the standards of this fanfiction, that doesn't make any sense. So I went upstairs and found a room and slammed the door, plopping down on the bed, and before I knew it, I was asleep. Just drunk in jealousy and love. Soapy's point, of, Soapy's point of view. You're pretty. I scooted my chair up to hers quickly and whispered in her ear, making her, making her giggle so cutely. Oh, I need you so much right now. I lost all control and fell into her lips making her fall backwards in her chair. But she didn't care. She rested her hands on my back and wrapped her legs around my waist. Okay, little safe cracker, just do it. You know you want to so badly. I told myself and I did what I wanted to. My injured, uh, my injured hand found its way up her top and under her brassiere. I felt her tremble underneath me from the touch, and I kept her steady with a slip of my tongue in her mouth. Mmm. Wow. I heard, <laughs> mm, I heard her moan inside my mouth while I kept stroking her breasts with my curious hands. You're a good kisser. She smiled, eyes droopy a little, but still beautiful. Shh. I hushed her and then began nibbling on her soft neck as I felt her hands slip down my trousers. Cremani! 
I jumped from her soft, slightest touch as her small hand went past my undergarments and grabbed me roughly, going up and down with great force of her hand. Mm -gah! I almost blurted out a moan so loud I bet everyone would hear, but, but it was fine with me. As she continuously did that, I stripped her from the top and made my hand slip down her pants, past her panties, and stroked her soft, bristle-haired pussy. Ah! Oh, God! Period! Exclamation mark. I never, ever <laughs> made... <laughs> I'm trying to stay in character here! <laughs> Without missing a beat! <laughs> I, I, I never ever made a woman like her moan this loud before in my life. Not that I'm saying I've never done it before, because I have many times. Y you like being touched? Because I know I do. I gave her face a quick, sly grin, watching as her head fell back and she felt me come in her hand. Oh, Jesus, period, exclamation mark, I shouted halfway. But still, nobody noticed. So as we were lying naked on the floor, I held her hips tightly and kissed her gently to help her ignore the sharp pain that will hit first before pleasure. Mmm, period, exclamation mark. She bit her bottom lip, squeezing my back so hard I thought she, I thought I would shed blood. Oh, Lord, I shouted again against her neck, thrusted harder and harder until she couldn't take no more. And as soon as I, and as soon as I come inside her, oh, oh, soapy Jennings, that was painful, but also very nice. Her drunken <laughs> voice stood out, and we knew we had made the biggest mistake in our lives. But as long as Cole didn't know, it was fine between us. Author's note. I hope that was good for all you soapy fans out there. It was a little too graphic and sexual, but I love it. Stay tuned for next chapter. <laughs> wow. So how, how do we follow that? Chapter 15. Reed returns. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, we follow a, a, a passionate sex scene with Brad Dourif. As every passionate sex scene should be followed. Yeah. Chapter 15, Reed Returns. Annie's POV. It was dark and stormy outside. I was glad that we were inside the hotel for the night. But one thing I don't remember doing, I can't remember what I did down at the old saloon a few hours ago, but I sure did feel a bit sore. When I opened my eyes, it was pure dark. Even the moon was gone covered by the darkened rain clouds. Cole, is that you? Period question mark. I tapped the person next to me and it was him. He was fast asleep with his hat on the floor and one arm on his chest while the other hung off the bed. Oh, Colton, I love you. I smiled in the darkness at him, stroking his cheek as I accidentally awakened him by touching his necklace. I'm sorry I woke you. I quickly lied, lied back down on my side face in the wall instead of him. Hey, have your stitches been removed yet? Period question mark. He asked me quietly as he was leaned up against my neck. I nodded and turned around to show him the scar. See? I spoke, letting him stroke my stomach until I felt like I needed him again. But please stop. I stuttered a bit, but he ref refused me to turn back around. Instead, he pulled me into his lips and wrapped his arms <laughs> tightly around me as he did with his legs as my waist, as my waist down was between his thighs let's see what more thins thins we can do tonight i smiled as i held him tight underneath me with his arms pinned above his head but before i did anything i realized that if i kept having more and more sex with him i would soon become pregnant and i don't <laughs> want that just yet that's right yeah, it's, that, quan yeah, it's quantity that, over quality that's that's the other detail that i feel is what i think uh gives it away as to that this was written by like a, a pubescent teenage girl um that this this sounds like something a a mother would tell her daughter you know you know don't don't have so much sex or you will get pregnant and that was interpreted by this author as quantity over quality there he is God. colton i must not do this i'm going to get a few drinks down in the main lobby 
I crawl off the bed and walk downstairs. Apparently still naked. But <laughs> when I noticed who was down there, I hid behind the railing of the steps. It was Josiah Reed. I know he was mm. looking for me, and I had to get us out of here. So I ran silently back into our room. Cole, Cole Reverend, Cole Reverend Reed is down in the lobby, and I can't be here. Please, let's get out of here now. And please, get me some clothes. <laughs> he got up quickly and took my hand. Well... He began looking out the window as he opened it up, still naked. This is the only way out without him seeing us. I'll jump out first so I could catch you on the way down. We'll both be naked for this. <laughs> he spoke. <coughs> he spoke, but I don't think I could do this. Not without getting dressed first. <laughs> Jumping out a window sounds scary, but if it was the only way to get out of this hotel and away from Reed, I'll take the risk. Naked. <laughs> when I saw him climb out onto the roof of the green-colored hotel, he asked for my hand. Come on, hurry. I obeyed and slowly climbed out onto the roof as well. Naked. <laughs> Were you gonna jump? We're gonna jump, okay? Period, question mark. He held my hand tightly as we both jumped off the roof at the same time, but Colton stumbled to his knees, and I helped him back up once we hit the ground. It was still pouring down rain, and we had to find somewhere to hid. Colton noticed Reed's, Reed's armored black horse and thought of something horrible. Get on, he ordered, but I didn't. Come on, Annie. I Look, I realize you're both naked, but this is not the time. <laughs> I slowly gave him my hand again, and he helped me up, and we were going gone in a flash down the road. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Every other time they've said they were putting clothes on or taking clothes off. Not so this we have time. To assume, we have, we have to, assume. to assume that if there's not a gratuitous costume porn scene, that they haven't gotten their clothes on. <laughs> No costume porn, no costume. That's the rules. <laughs> Josiah Reed's POV. As I was inside Hoodoo's casino with my little whore by my side, I heard the sounds of my horse whinny, and it was gone just like that into the darkness of the streets. Damn it! I cursed under my breath as I turned back around to face my pregnant whore, Sally, and smiled with my arms behind my back. Let's go upstairs and get you rested up. I grabbed her and slowly walked her upstairs and placed her inside a room while I closed the door behind me. The kid and his little whore will pay for what they done. Period exclamation mark. I shouted, clenching my fists as I resumed my plans with hoodoo. Alright, here we go. Chapter 16. The argument. Who's the father? We're, we're getting one of these already. Oh, God. It's, you know, it's, it's a... Uh, uh, it's a fan fiction with, uh, you know, with, with the romance triangle where both the male leads have sex with the woman. So this is a this is a, a standard plot that you have to include somewhere. And apparently, she has the gestation period of a xenomorph. <laughs> As it resumed it rain, I told the boys to get inside their tents for some shelter, but the ones I were waiting for is Colton and Annie. Huh. I sighed, but out of the corner of my eye, I noticed Cole and Andy riding up, and they both jumped off the horse. Damn it, Cole. Why do you have Reed's horse? He'll be after us now. I shouted, with periods instead of exclamation marks, before Cole and motioned for Andy to get inside my tent. But, she spoke, just go, I told her again, and she listened. Hey, Clay. Let's get one thing straight here. Don't tell her what to do, okay? That's my job. She's not what you think she is. She is not someone you can have for yourself and do her every day. <laughs> I don't know if that was any intentional innuendo or not, so I'm just going to let that be. He began, but I stopped him. Colton, I've only had her once before, but that was in a... Okay, so she's not a virgin then. <laughs> this is a very inconsistent plot line. I was stopped by Colton <laughs> as he pulled as he pulled me close with a yank of my red bandana around her neck. What? Period? Question mark? So you have had sex with her? God damn it! Period! Exclamation mark! Uh, he <laughs> let me go and turned around as he threw his hat to the ground. Um, I can't do it with my headphones. Uh, I, I'll just take this piece of paper here. This will be my Foley sound. God damn it! There. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to bed, kid, I spoke, heading into my tent and zipped it up so no rain would come inside. 
Wow, everything is ejaculating in the story, even the rain. <laughs> in the morning, when the sun was beating down on all of us, I noticed Cole and Soapy sitting by the fire pit, throwing rocks in it. Kid, why are you so upset with Clay? You know she is a beautiful woman. Soapy began to laugh, but before Colton tried to grab Soap, I shouted at him. Hey, I said as they both turned to look at me. Stop it, kid. Just leave us all alone with you. I, excuse me. I grumbled, but when I turned my back, Annie was standing there behind me so quiet today with a look of shock on her face. I, I'm pregnant, is all we heard, and Colton stood up, dropping his whiskey bottle as Soapy looked down at the ground. Author's note. What will happen next? Read next chapter to find out. And who's the father, period, question mark. Bum, bum, bum. That, that's actually in the text. That wasn't my joke. That, that's actually in the author's <laughs> yeah, note. Yeah, they actually take the bum, bum, bum. Uh, yeah. You want the next one? Uh, Sure. Yeah, because the previous... Yeah, this is also another... For those of you who have not read fanfiction, this is also another um, problem that chapters can vary really wildly in length. Uh, let me just get some coffee. Uh, reading things like this for a long time does really bad things to your throat. <clears> throat. Oh, yeah. Chapter 17, Fist Fight. Cole's point of view. I felt so devastated, but it was just a dream. <laughs> I actually thought Annie was pregnant. <laughs> wow, retcon of things right off the bat, aren't we? I'm glad she's not. When I got up from off the dirt ground beside the fire pit, I took my hat off my eyes and got up feeling like crap. My back was in pain and my head was throbbing. Annie, I spoke aloud, and I noticed Clay appear out from his tent. He looked at me and Annie made her way out of it. She smiled and walked towards me. Oh, Colton, what's wrong? Period, question mark. She asked, sitting me down on the log. I had a dream that you were pregnant. Isn't that weird? I told her as I scratched my arm and smiled a little. All she did in reply was laugh. Well, that's weird because I am pregnant. <laughs> wow, two retcons in the space of less than two paragraphs. That's impressive. I froze then. This, yeah, the flip-flopping is going to be crazy here. I froze then and looked down at the dirty underneath my boots. <laughs> What, were you, like, hiding a girly bag underneath your boots or something? <laughs> no. Sorry. So, excuse me. Sorry. No! You can't. Who? Who did it? Period. Question mark. I asked, shaking her gently by her shoulders. That's going to be really good for the baby, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Your, your son is going to be perfectly fine. She looked down, and I noticed a look of sadness wash over her face. I don't know, Cole. I really don't. Again, put a comma in there. Please use commas responsibly. <laughs> she then rested her head on my shoulder and I pulled her close. Close enough that she was almost on my lap. We're going to find out who made you this way, okay? Period question mark. I stood up and called out to all the men in this hideout. When I did, I saw them all come out of their tents looking so tired and worn out. Also, what, I, I just realized one of the weird things about retconning it as a dream at first is because how would he have known, and how would Cole have known that Soapy and uh, uh, and Annie have slept together, even if it was like a one drunken one night stand? Like they've never established that Cole found out. Apache intuition. But yeah, like this entire and and, and why would why does Cole have any reason to doubt who would have gotten her pregnant? Because as far as he knows. They're the only ones who've there. He's the only one who's who slept with Annie, except for uh, except for Clay, and that was years ago. So yeah, this is really contrived. Which one have you got her? But she stopped me and pulled me away from them. Why do you think it would be that easy, Cole? <laughs> All right, even even Annie Ooh. realizes how stupid this is. She hushed me as she began to whisper. I looked at her in shock, but it couldn't be true. What? Period question mark? No, it can't be me. We have only... I mean, we had. She paused me with a kiss, and I kissed her back, but almost got too into it. Oh, dear. 
Sorry, got off track there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, how could it be me? We have only done it once. You must have been with someone else other than me, Eddie. Or, sorry, excuse me. You must have been with someone else other than me, Eddie. <laughs> I felt hurt, but a little jealous and angry at the same time. Annie, if you're seeing someone else, just leave me out of this, please. I got up and walked away from her and climbed onto Reed's horse and rode off without saying anything to her. How could she do this to me? She betrayed me just like that. I'm fed up with this world! <laughs> I can't believe how a big fool I've been, I said to myself as I head towards Empire. When I got there, I strolled my horse along... Uh, the, I stole my horse along the dirt streets slowly as the people were still afraid I would run them over or something. Well, given how I play on occasion, I think their their fear is justified. Their fear is uh, absolutely justified. Uh, unless, uh, unless it's on PSP, in which case there's no NPCs. Huh. <laughs> huh. I guess this is what I must do now. I climbed off the big armored horse and bumped into a nice looking street whore. <laughs> she wore a red, blue, and some white colored dress with a blue frilly scarf around her shoulder over her open breasts. Well, hello there, cowboy. She spoke so quietly to me, but before I got any closer, I noticed she had a big belly. That must mean she was pregnant because she was very skinny and yet she had a big belly. Or it could mean that, you know, she hadn't eaten in several days and it was just bloating. I don't know. I have to get going. I jumped back onto my horse and sped off away from that part of town. What I needed was some long, nice rest. So I stopped on my horse and climbed off, but I was instantly hit in the back of the head with a bottle and fell to the ground on my belly. I tried to get up and see who was doing that to me, but I couldn't keep my eyes open. And all I was thinking was, ah, oh, shit, not again. <laughs> As I closed them, it was all dark. Pure darkness washed over me completely. Got him, hoodoo. <laughs> I heard Reed's voice ring in my ears. Oh, it, it is Reed again who did that. Actually, no, it was Hoodoo. Actually, no, it was Hoodoo. That happened. That yeah, that did it last time, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. It was Hoodoo that uh, smacked the bottle last time. When yeah. They did the prison episode. Yeah, in the game, it's Hoodoo. Yeah. As I was dragged towards Hoodoo's desk. Well, well, kid. Where is the whore? Period. Question mark. He ordered me to say something right, but I didn't. I don't know who you're talking about, so leave me alone. I spit in his face as he grabbed me and pinned me down on top of his desk as his hands pushed into my shoulders. Wow, this is an incredibly faithful fanfic. It even has clipping. <laughs> okay, you got that joke eventually. <laughs> it's a success. <laughs> tell me where... So, tell me where she is or else, kid. She, he gave me a smirk. But I didn't take it. Or else what? You're gonna torture me to death, you bastard. I shouted before I was smacked across the a vase and then a blade put to my neck. Tell me where she is, period, space, space. He pressed it closer, leaning in closer himself as I reached for my hatchet from my backside. That has to be very uncomfortable for the horse. And swung it out onto his left shoulder watching as he fell to the ground. You bad-tempered soul. Reed took Hoodoo's spot for him as he punched me in the face instead of a smack. Y you would never make me spit it out. Rot in hell, period, exclamation mark. I spit again, but he pushed me to the floor on my stomach as he kicked me a few to the ribs and I just had to hold my aching sides. I'll find myself. He stepped away from me, but before he did, I grabbed him around the ankle of his black boot and pulled him down. You bastard! Period! Exclamation mark. I threw a powerful punch to his face and then one to the side, just like he did me, just so he could feel the pain that I'm in. You made her pregnant. I can't believe you! Period! Exclamation mark. I stopped his moving with another punch in the face, and this time he was surely knocked out. You'll never touch her again. I limped away from both Hoodoo's and Reed's limp bodies as I had my arm around my side. 
I, I'm trying to imagine that. Okay. Yeah, that's weird choreography again. As I had my arm around my side, thinking about what my next trip was. I recommend acid. Uh, all right, we can alternate. We could, this was a little long. We could alternate on on the POV switches. Okay, chapter eighteen, soapy. Author's notes. Hello, you people. This will be a little strange. A little, a little. No space between a and little. Strange chapter, but it will be good. Also, and we're gonna find out who's actually the real father of Annie's child. Can't wait myself. Enjoy. Period. Exclamation mark. In a surprising twist, it's actually the Alhambra bartender. <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> Soapy's POV. I felt so consumed up right now in all of this talking about who's the father thing. I have only did it once with the little lady. I bet it was Cole, though. I have seen how close they are next to each other all the time. No matter what day it was. And we were both drunk when we did it, so I couldn't be blamed for this crap. Yes, hey, ev everyone Everyone knows that drug semen is impossible, uh, or incompatible with eggs. Everyone knows that. It's like Biology 101. I find this author amazing because he or she has taken, and, and probably she, like we're, I'm, I'm getting a feeling it's a she. Uh, she has uh, taken Soapy's purdy mouth and just stuffed it full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen any any ten dollar words from Soapy at all. It's probably the biggest tell that this is OOC. Yep. Hey Port, where's Clay? Period question mark. I stood up before Port, who was crouched down with a stick, messing around with the fire pit. He turned to face me and nodded. What, Soap? He replied quietly, but also I could hear anger in his voice. What has happened to Clay? Period question. I asked again, but used a different form of the same question. Nice. What? <laughs> well, Soapy, he's just upset about this whole father thing. He sat down. That's all. He finished, drinking his whiskey again. I thought for a minute to myself, then before I could sit down, we all heard Annie crying so sadly to herself. Port cared if she was crying, but he stayed up there with Clay and I... Well, with Clay and I ran down towards her and sat beside her. Hey, what's wrong? Period question mark. I asked her removing my hat and a piece of my dark hair fell on my face. It's just Cole. She she whipped her eyes and looked down at her hands and that were resting on her lap of her dress. What about him? Is he upset about all this too? Period question mark. I asked her, getting close to her. She replied with a nod of her head. Well, it is hurting everyone because we don't know who it is, but it's hurting me and Cole the most. But mostly Cole. <laughs> I spoke softly, <laughs> whipping her fresh tears away as I slowly and nervously put my arm around her to comfort her. You're so what? sweet, Soapy. She fell into me and wrapped her arms around my waist tightly. I couldn't help but stroke the thick length of her long, flowing hair. You'll always be there, won't you? Period, question mark. She leaned in slowly towards me as I did the same. Yes. I replied as her lips hit mine, and I closed my eyes, feeling her lips touch mine so gently. I sat on my injured hand this time and used my other to stroke her hair. Wow, that second last sentence there was almost poetic. <laughs> it's run on, in, in how much of a run on it was. So, next up, we're going to go to Kansas City and ask Maury to settle this once and for all. All right. Okay, Cole's point of view. It was still 12-something in the afternoon, and I was outside in the dirt again, lying on my back with the sun beating in my eyes. Ah, I gruffled a little, still remembering the rough kicks I got to the side and the punches that hit my face as it was still bleeding and badly bruised. Nothing was swollen, but just bruised and cut. I couldn't get Annie off my mind, and even if I didn't want to see her no more, she was still there, somewhere in my mind. Hey, kid, you there? I heard a voice call out to me as I noticed a young man in a stagecoach holding onto the reins of the horses. I tried to get up, but no luck. I think one of my ribs must have been broken from the hard kick of Reed's steel-toed boot. Oh, shoot, kid. <laughs> Let me help you. I recognized that voice anywhere, and when I opened my eyes, 
I saw dirty blonde hair and a string of straw stinking out of his mouth. <laughs> stinking out of his mouth. Well, I mean, straw is notoriously smelly, even when it's not covered in horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, look at you. I spoke as good as I could. Yep, I'm the ferry driver. <laughs> Still trying to turn that wheel, kid. Still won't turn, but I still move my arms like it is. I I know you, kid, and I just could and, and, and you don't just lie out on the ground like that, all beat up. Say, have you? Can you help me find the lost treasure of El Dorado? <laughs> he smiled as he helped me onto the driver's seat beside him, but I couldn't sit. Ah! Period! Exclamation mark. I felt my rib pop, and it wasn't good. <laughs> so basically, you get, the, the you're gonna need drive... to get you're gonna need to get that patched up, kid. I'm looking for the lost city of Atlantis. <laughs> and 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 Henry Avery's treasure. <laughs> oh Jesus, kid! I need to get some help. He jumped off the coach and shouted out names: Hey, Jerry, Tom, and Twiggy. <laughs> One of these names is not like the other. I want to know I mean, Twiggy. I want to know Twiggy's backstory. Get out here. We have a patient. He yelled as the door of the couch opened up and two skinny men and one big man came out, stopping out. For for comedy's sake, I'm going to assume that Twiggy is the big guy. <laughs> He's up there. All we need is to lie him down on the stretcher, and then we can begin. I watched as the three men pulled out a stretcher, and the ferry driver helped me down once again. Here, kid, lie down. They helped me get on my back without hurting myself. No, we're gonna have to remove ya shirt. Or, excuse me, it's, no, we're gonna have to remove ya shirt. He smiled at me as I nodded and rested my head back down. The, the, the phonics on that particular one really does make it sound like he's supposed to be Scottish. Like, like, look, look at that. It is it is very strange, isn't it? Jimmy Duhon lives on. It, it is. It's. I was going to make a certain joke, but then I realized uh, it's, it, it's related to certain videos we haven't released yet. So, uh, <laughs> so oops, spoilers. Uh, Letting him do it himself so I wouldn't injure myself. Once my heavy top was off, I felt his hands push down lightly on my rib cage to see if any of them were broken. Oh no, is this going to be a sex scene now? <laughs> and for sure, he found a broken rib. This Kid. is as sexy as it can be with a 200 pound Irishman standing over you. <laughs> Kid, we're going to have to remove it or just leave it and put wrap around it. It's up to ya, he, str he shrugged as I was being stared at all of them. Remove it. I don't care as long as it will heal much faster. I made up my mind and the young ferry driver and his boys smiled. Good choice, kid. He spoke as he had a scapel, a scapel in his hand and began slowly on my left rib cage. It took about three painful hours <laughs> until they could finally get it removed. All we need is to wrap you up and we could need the roast for a bit once it's on. The rest for a bit once it's on. The blonde said again as I noticed his bruises on his face were gone. Now I could see his blue eyes more clearly, and he was a oh my god, he was a nice looking man. There you're done. It's another good to place to shoot, boys. <laughs> there you're done and ready to go. He smiled and helped me off the stretcher. You're gonna have to kit your shirt off for a while. You might take it off your trousers while you're at it. <laughs> By the way, where do you live and where are you headed? I'll give you a ride. Yes. I'll give you a ride, then I'll take you home. There's only one form of payment I ask for you. Now can you take off your trousers and stick up your ass like a girl? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Wow, that. we're worse than the Vic now. <laughs> it's what we, this is what we've become after reading this thing for over two and a half hours. We're bad people. Right. Once I was up on the coach, lying down on one of the seats, I told him and we were off. When I got back to the hideout, I told him to stop at the entrance and we both waved goodbye as he was off again. Oh shit, I cursed quietly, 
putting my hat back up again. I uh, putting my hat back on my head as I held my side gently. But when I got up there, where all the tents were, I noticed Sophie and Annie making out. God damn it! Carry an exclamation mark. I shouted, getting their attention. Annie hurried away from Soap as to say nothing was going on, but I saw it clear as day. Cole, wh what happened? Where were you? I was worried. She looked down at my wrap and hugged me, but I back away from her. Don't, Andy. I've had enough of your nonskins. I shouted, getting close to her. I saw you and my best no, it's friend. Non it's nonsense. It's kind of like incense. It just doesn't smell when you oh, burn it. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's it's something that's incomprehensible. It doesn't really make that much sense. I, I saw you and my best friend, Soapy, making out over there. How do you explain that? Andy, period, exclamation mark. I turned my back to her and tried to keep that tears of sadness back. So does the fanficer realize that they're, that fanfiction.net has formatting? They don't need to do... You, you could use bold or italics instead of uh, exclamation marks, right? Yeah, it... Fanfiction.net supports Markdown. Yes. C Cole, I'm sorry. I thought you didn't like me no more. She squatted down beside me, and I looked at her. I don't hate you. I love you. I I got back. I I got back up, remembering what would happen if I sat. Ah! I shrieked, full of pain, as I lied myself down on the dirt ground, getting dirt on my bare back. Oh, Cole, what happened? Your face is all cut up and you're bleeding. She ru rubbed a cloth across my face and whipped off the blood. I'll put some alcohol on it for you. She spoke, and before I knew it, I felt a bad burning sensation on my face where my cuts are located. Annie, I already know who the father is. I spoke out of nowhere, and she stopped rubbing, but then continued it. It's... Huh, I sighed. It's soapy. I finished swallowing the lump in my throat harshly. Okay, before we continue, there's two things I don't understand. Number one, did the nice Irish uh, uh, bears, we'll call them, uh, cut his shirt off or cut the rib out? Um, I think both. Okay, probably both. Uh, so I, I know I know what's coming um, in this next part. I'm just gonna let you read it blind and he just hear yeah. your reaction because this this is this is gonna be great. Go ahead. There was something else and it slipped me. This is this is this is. I this I've is been so weird. I have been looking forward to this next section ever since we started recording. Oh yeah, my other my other question here is: if his ribs been removed, why does it hurt to sit down after he met the Irishman? Um, I, I am assuming that the 13-year-old teenage girl does not have a medical degree. It, it, just a hunch, you know. I'm assuming that even a 13-year-old girl knows what anal is. <laughs> oh. Mm. Oh, what what has yeah, this dick done there. to us? They, it's, tur it's turned us into, uh, into uh, comedians consisting entirely of jokes that even George Carlin would reject for being too <laughs> tasteless. Josiah Reed's POV, POV. Oh Lord, you have blessed this beautiful woman with such greatness. I shouted to the sky of my old darkened church and the only light that was seen was the dark redness from the stained glass window behind me and the podium. Behave, cursed soul. I resumed my attention back, to the, back on the young woman who was kneeling in front of me on her knees with her red blindfold on as she was bare naked. You're the one who will be cursed as my soul. I spoke silently towards her and kneeled in front of her, raising her chin with my hand and poured the holy water into her mouth. I tipped my head back. I tipped her head back gently and smiled. Obey me, my soul. I spoke again as she rose before me and I pulled her close. I soon found my lips on hers and then, as I was about to let her go, my green eyes turned clear yellow and my craving for blood rushed inside me. <laughs> I could feel the blood racing inside her and inside me. Ah! Is the only sounds that I heard when my two long, sharp teeth pierced her skin and sank into her deeply. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, it's not the only part. Read the author notes. 
Yeah, I want to know what's going on in her head. Now, that ending was weird, and it only happens in this chapter. But anyway, Soapy is the father of Annie's baby. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. You introduce, like, a, the, such a weird plot device, like Reed being a vampire, and then never use it again? Are you crazy? It never happens again. Ever. Oh. All right. What uh, the... Yeah. Fuck. Okay, we're we're uh, okay. I'll all right. I'll take chapter nineteen here. Okay. All right, chapter nineteen. Fist fight. Colton versus Soapy. Dawn of Justice. Uh, author author's <laughs> notes. In this chapter, Soapy and Colton get into a big argument. Who starts it and who will finish it? Just read and enjoy. Period. Exclamation mark. Oh, we're gonna. Cole's point of view. You bastard. Period. Exclamation mark. I walked up to Soapy and grabbed him by his jacket, pushing him against the wall. Why did you do this to her? Why? I pulled him back, then dropped him on the ground and kicked him in the gut a few times. Ugh, Colton. We're friends. It was just an accident. He got back up, and I hit him one in the face, making sure not to injure myself again. Kid. Stop! Exclamation mark, period. Nice variety there. Instead of period exclamation mark, it's exclamation mark, period. He got me in the face as well, and that was one powerful punch. Oh, Soapy, you want to go, do you? Period, question mark. I got up and tackled him down to the dirty ground. I could see Annie in the background shouting at us, but that didn't stop us from fighting. I can't believe you. I got him in the ribs, making him squeal a bit, again, with two E's. You son of a bleh. But I was cut off by a kick to the face, and I grabbed his ankle and pulled him down hard to the ground. I grabbed, excuse me, I grabbed onto his right arm and twisted it backwards until he screamed out in pain. You bastard, period, exclamation mark. Soapy cursed this time and whipped his lip from the blood. He grabbed me by the hair and kneed me in the face as I tried to get back up, but he kicked me in the ribs and I coughed up blood. You little safe cracker. Period, exclamation mark. I shouted at him and grabbed him by the sleeve of his jacket, but it ripped and he fell onto the ground. In what world is safe cracker an insult? <laughs> that little son of a bitch is such a safe cracker. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I got you now, kid. He sounded so phycopathical. I think that's how you're supposed to pronounce that. Yeah. As as he had me in an arm lock, but I took him by the waist and flipped him over my head as I kicked him one good one in the ribs. Colton, Soapy, knock it off now. We stopped as we both started to pant from all the energy that went through us. What is all of this about anyway? Period question mark. Clay, who was the one that shouted, pulled us away from each other as he sat us down on the log. It is all his fault, Soapy announced, as I got back up, but Clay got me back down and called me and calmed me down some. No! He was the one who got Annie pregnant, you son of a bitch, exclamation mark, period. Uh, we started again as pulled Soapy against the rock wall and punched him again. You retarded kid! Soapy got me in the sensative spot. Apparently, the groin area is a sensative, a sensative spot, and I couldn't sensative. help. And I couldn't help but fall to my knees. Gah! You know damn well that's a cheap shot, soap. And I grabbed him by the head and pulled him down to the ground with me. But since he was skinny, he escaped my tight grasp and knocked me over the edge of the hill into the water. Clay and Port tried to stop, but they just got pushed back out of it. Port, you hold soap as I get the kid. I noticed Clay jumped down the hill and tried not to fall into the water. Cole, grab my hand, he ordered me as he was leaning over the water as I did and he pulled me out. Oh, Colton, you got something removed, didn't you? Period, question mark. <laughs> Clay, <laughs> out of context, that is a horrifying statement. Clay, 1890s uh, Irish bestectomy. <laughs> Clay asked me as he helped me up the hill. I nodded and fell to the ground unconscious. 
I could feel the water fall down my bare chest, and my Indian pants were so soaked, <laughs> and so were my Apache, spelled A-P-A-C-H-I-E with no capitals, Indian shoes. I also felt the warmth of my blood soak my face and ached in pain. But I still couldn't believe Soapy got her pregnant. <laughs> nice to have your priorities straight there, buddy. I only had I only had on time with her, and it wasn't that far yet because of the stitches. So he wasn't so much cock blocked as he was cock stitched. St stitch blocked? Stitch blocked. Get, stitch blocked. We'll go with stitch blocked. I opened my eyes and I could see Clay by my side. Hey Clay, where's Annie and Soap? I asked quietly as I was resting on a stretcher in Clay's tent. Soapy's in Port's tent, and Annie is outside with Chavez. Nice tent switch there. Is she alright about this? Period question mark, I asked again, but he didn't answer. Just get some rest, Cole. You need it. I couldn't feel the blood washing over me no more, and my pants weren't soaked. They were dry. Dum dum dum. Author's note. I know that was kind of short, but I still liked it. But some of it was kind of fun to picture in your head of how they're fighting. Chapter 19 to come, so be there. Chapter 19 to come, so be there. Uh, you mean chapter 20? Chap yeah, and we're going into chapter 20. <clears throat> and chapter 20. Yeah, this is the second last chapter. Thankfully. Okay, we're almost to the final boss here, folks. Yeah. Chapter 20. Annie's leaving? Author's note. In this short chapter, Annie Stokes leaves the boys and Colton. By the way, she is not pregnant. Sorry. Last chapter of the story up next. Beautiful retcon. Excellent. 10 out of 10. She's not, she's not pregnant. You have to wait for the egg to hatch. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. Port and Clay were busy talking business as Soapy and I were talking things over about Annie. Okay, one thing. She is not pregnant. I blurted my ass. I blurted my ass on a log and my elbows leaned into my lap. Soapy what? nodded, removing his hat and as so did I. I oh he, my god. Soapy, wait, he, he, wait, wait. Cole also removed Soapy's hat? Yeah. They were both wearing, yeah, yeah, were both sure. wearing Soapy, Soapy's hat. Soapy was wearing two hats. <clears throat> And also, apparently, he blurted his ass on a log. <laughs> Somehow. Put him a wolf job. Put a hat on it. Put another hat on it. <laughs> put it in the house. <clears throat> I got the gutter for this is three X's. Uh, Annie returned back to the hideout with the boys and entered the nearest tent. I wondered what was wrong, so I entered the tent also. Hey, Annie, you all right? I asked, sitting down beside her. She turned away from me and cried, No, I ain't staying here no more. You know what's wrong. She stood up and marched out the tent. I went out to her and took her by the arm. What the hell is going on? I cursed, causing Clay and the boys to draw attention to both of us. Goodbye, Colton, Annie said in an angered, saddened voice that almost broke my heart. I tried to keep her in my grasp, but I didn't want to take advantage of her reasoning to leave. Dun, dun, dun. None of that made sense. All right. Okay, we're almost finished with this one. Uh, oh. It's almost in the bag. Okay, we're, we're doing this for you, folks. <laughs> Chapter 21, the end. Author's note, this is my last chapter of this story. I don't know what I'm going to do next, make a sequel or just do a new complete story of gun. Probably sequel. Well, enjoy. Cole's and just point... like Neversoft, there never was a sequel to this. No, nope, there, there wasn't. Cole's point of view. Damn, god damn, I cursed repeatedly to myself as I rode on down to Dodge. The air was hot and humid. The air was dry and slow, as well as hot and humid, and the flies buzzed like a wild herd of cattle across the frontier. Okay. I didn't realize cattle were known for buzzing, but... Alright. I had Port at my side on his horse. Both horses, Indian saddlebreds, black and white, riding along to make sure I am safe. When we arrived, Reed showed up just after we did on his armored mare in front of Hoodoo's palace. Damn, why is he here, Cole? Port looked over at me, and I kept my glaze on him. <laughs> Is it maple syrup or something? <laughs> I, I kept his glaze. <laughs> <laughs> Officer, your eyes look glazed. Have you been hitting the donuts again? <laughs> I don't know. But I bet he's after something, and I might know what that something is, I explained, 
full of rage, which is why that sentence ended with a period and not an exclamation mark. Yeah, I spurred my horse into a charging gallop. Straight up to Reverend Reed, I... And I noticed Port turned back around to get help. Reed, I shouted below my breath. I, I guess that's related to something like shouting on top of lung. Sure. Uh, if if, we'll if you're that. of a certain age, you'll get that joke. Uh, <laughs> of a certain YouTube age, I guess. As I jumped <laughs> off my horse and armed with my rifle, I turned around to glare into my face. He, you know, he turned. Sorry, he turned around to glare into my face. That was that was my fault, not the fanfic writers. I apologize. And I fired. Son of a bitch! Reed dodged the bullet just in the nick of time and mounted well, he is his horse. Vampire <laughs> mounted his horse yet again. He had some help surrounding me, so I held tight to my rifle and dodged behind a building, stirring up dust as I fell. Damn it! He's not getting away. That ha! I peeked up over and heard a strange, familiar yell. Clay. It was him and Port, with his henchmen and Chavez, all on horseback, firing their weapons in the dusty Wild West air. This is the best written sentence so far. So I appeared from behind the building and fired it at Reed's helpers. And then it cuts to uh, another, to, a, to a time lapse. Sure, like jump jump past all of the exciting action. That's that's great writing. Yeah, jump cut. I don't know how to write that. I didn't know no. how to write the rest of this, but we didn't jump cut past that. Um. I got shot once in the shoulder and twice in the leg. It was terrifying that I was still going, as my buds were telling me to stop to give in, but I didn't until... until I fell out. Jenny was running through my head like an angry horsefly. This is not... she's not... she's not coming back. I know it's tempting to think so, given all the retconning, but she is dead. I did miss her, but Annie was the one I missed dearly. Hum? I opened my eyes to find everyone I knew surrounding me as the doctor was finishing up stitching me another time. What? I raised myself up to get a better look at what I thought was Ned. Ned White. No! I grumbled deep in my throat, causing my voice to come out deeper than usual. Clay snapped me out of it, and I was back to reality. My dark body covered in many stitches and my head pounding like a sad cowboy playing a broken banjo. comes flying off of it hits somebody else in the face where, where is she i asked hoping to find her in sight but no so i closed my eyes and cursed wildly inside and then we have an epigraph here how can one man loose so much how could i live like this in pain i'm wanted wanted dead or alive <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ending note. Hope you enjoyed it. Whoever read it. <laughs> well, we. Oh, we, we sure did read it. <laughs> we did. We certainly enjoyed it. <laughs> we we certainly and, read it. We enjoyed it. Perhaps not as the creator intended, but we enjoyed it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, also, yes. To, to be fair, such a careless whisper has it has improved significantly as an author in the ten years since probably she wrote this. Um, I, I've read some of, I think, her stuff uh, more recently. Uh, like, it's it's not my kind of thing. But, I mean, for those of you who are interested in, uh, you know, a slash fic involving, you know, Michael and Trevor from Grand Theft Auto V, you could do a lot worse than her stuff recently. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So, yeah. Um, like I said, this was her, this was probably her first um, fan fiction that she posted to her account. And, um... Yeah. Yes, it's terrible, but it's a lot. It, uh, but the the author's later stuff is considerably better. And given the fact that you know the the author specifically told us, you know, feel free to chuckle or point out any flaws. I think we certainly did a lot of both uh, in this <laughs> recording. So there we go. 
This has been our let's, let's play of gun uh, company. Uh, 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 this has been our let's play of gun accompanied by three hours of fan fiction reading. <laughs> it's been almost three hours. Um, almost, and, almost three hours. And uh, overwhelmingly positive reviews from all the same user. Oh, is it okay? Um, I haven't actually bothered to look at the reviews yet. But, there are twelve uh, reviews. And they're all from the same guy, and they're all on different chapters. Oh, someone actually made a fanfic called Gun Magruder's Ghost. Oh my in god! Reference to, uh, in, in reference to the uh, the the joke sequel that uh, <laughs> the, that that uh, they posted um, on uh, in Tony Hawk's Proving Ground. Anyway, um, so that that this has been a production of Gun. Uh, <laughs> And uh, next time, uh, I, I I think for now I think I'm gonna try to do a couple more reviews, finish up the Harry Potter series because I've that that's been it's been several months since I reviewed any other games, and that I still have to do the two Deathly Hallows games. And then after I've done a couple of reviews, I'll go back to let's playing another game. Um, this is this game has been um, it's been a desert game. There's been a lot of you know sand and hot sun. And, and dry lots of dry stuff um our next game will have a lot of uh water inside very wet not this kind of wet <laughs> just generally speaking wet there will be a lot of water in it i think you will enjoy it but reviews right. first because I, I know that some of my some of my subscribers have been complaining about the lack of reviews and these let's plays have been a way for me to teach myself a double premiere so I'll go back and, and do some some of my first ever reviews in Premiere because I've been using VideoPad for those. Well, that'll be oh, something my, to look forward to. My my voice is killing tearing you. itself apart. Yeah. Yeah.